On day one, I spawned in as an ice spider, an arachnid as cold as the Arctic reaches. All eight of my legs are here, but why am I so little? I'm only a baby spider. That's when I realized that I was trapped inside of a magic circle. An evil looking necromancer stood on the outside, casting a terrible spell. A spider of ice, it will suffice. So says me, necromancer Bryce. Light swirled all around me and the entire world shook. But when it stopped, I felt like I was able to move. Great, I better get out of here while I can. I tried to scurry away, but Bryce the necromancer blocked my path. Not so fast there, ice spider. Your part to play is done, so now I'll destroy you and complete the spell. Hey, I have a name, you know. It's Zozo, and I don't like it when people say they're going to destroy me. Oh, it's nothing personal. That magic spell I just cast is going to destroy the entire world 100 days from now. What? The entire world? You do realize that doesn't make it better, right? But it does make it destroyed. The ritual also says that I should sacrifice the ice spider used in the spell for best results. Well, it's not going to be this ice spider. I'm leaving, and while I'm at it, I'm gonna find a way to counteract your spell. I bolted for it as fast as my eight legs could carry. Instead of chasing after me, the necromancer Bryce just laughed wickedly to himself. Easier said than done, my arachnid friend. The world's destruction is close at hand. On day two, I managed to get far enough away from the necromancer Bryce that I could take it easy. I looked around in wonder at the glowing ancient forest around me. I also noticed that I had 10 hearts and that my hunger gauge was lowering fast. It looks like running for my life from a destruction-happy evil necromancer really works up an appetite. I searched around until I found a tree that had apples in it for me to take. Then I ate the apples until my hunger meter was full again. Surviving all alone in this world as a baby spider isn't so bad. I'm really getting the hang of it. I wasn't alone for long though, as I saw a couple of skeleton vanguards appear out from between the trees. There you are, ice spider. We shall get rid of you for our master, the necromancer Bryce. He must really want to sacrifice me if he's sending skeletons to do his bidding. I tried to fend off the skeleton vanguards, but my spider bites didn't have much of an effect on creatures made of bone. Give up, spider. The world is doomed, and your sacrifice will seal its fate. The mobs kept attacking, bringing me down to my last few hearts. I thought I was doomed. But then, an energy blast distracted the skeleton vanguards and made them run away. Out of nowhere, an illusioner appeared. I realized immediately that they must have been the one who cast the spell. Follow me, little ice spider. I'll take you to my camp. We'll be safer there. You saved my life, so I guess I can trust you. On day three, the illusioner took me to his campsite and cast a protective illusion barrier around both of us so that the mobs wouldn't find us. You're pretty good at casting spells, illusioner. Please, call me Alan. Illusioner Alan. Okay, Alan, you're pretty good at casting spells. Thank you for saying that, but unfortunately, there are mages far more powerful than me in the world, and some of them are using their gifts for evil. You mean like Necromancer Bryce? Is it true that his spell will end the world? Not if we good mages have anything to say about it. Soon after, another mage arrived at the campfire. This one was a wind caller with the power to, well, call wind. I'm wind caller Windy. I'm here to see the ice spider. That's me, I'm Ice Spider Zozo. Ah, oh, the winds are truly blowing in our favor. You, my amicable arachnid, may be the key to saving the entire world from destruction. Necromancer Bryce's ritual can be stopped by a more powerful spell as long as he doesn't sacrifice an ice spider. So as long as I'm alive, there's a chance that you mages will be able to stop him. We'll need your help too. You can battle his henchmen and travel to places which would be too dangerous for us. You can count on me. I might still be a baby spider, but I won't let the entire world down. From day four to day five, I began to make use of the trees around me to gather wood for a wooden pickaxe. Because my starting area was a forest, it didn't take long to have enough to craft the tool. But wood wouldn't be good for long if I could do better. I mined into the ground with my wooden pickaxe for some stone and quickly upgraded to a stone pickaxe. With the new and improved stone tool, I was able to gather even more stone to use for building and crafting. First, I made a stone sword to defend myself with. Next, I started building a strong shelter where I could stay safe from Necromancer Bryce and his undead minions. Illusioner Alan had chosen to come with me. His illusion spells would help keep me safe while I built the base. Thanks for all your help so far, Alan. Remember, Zozu, do not rely on magic. It cannot keep every mob away. I soon understood what he meant when a skeleton appeared and interrupted my building. Good thing I crafted that stone sword. I drew my weapon and brought down the skeleton with a couple whacks. 
My victory against the skeleton made me stronger and more experienced. And because of that, I grew out of my baby mode into a regular-sized ice spider with 30 hearts. I can shoot ice blasts now. That is more like it. From day six to day eight, I was out exploring in the nearby gravelly mountains when I saw a friendly gorilla being attacked by a slime ball. Get away from me, you slime ball. The slime ball didn't answer. It just bounced and got slime everywhere. You may be slimy, but this ice spider isn't so helpless anymore. I hit the slime ball with my stone sword over and over. It did a good amount of damage, but I was taking damage the longer I stayed in contact with the slime ball. I retreated back to a safe distance and shot the slime ball with an ice blast. It froze the mob solid, so I was able to get in a few more hits with my stone sword while it was immobilized. I repeated this two or three times with more ice blasts until the slime ball was defeated. Once the battle was over, the gorilla cheered and ran up to greet me. Burr, I was cold just watching that, but I'm glad you're on my side. Of course. I, Ice Spider Zozo, am all about saving others. You're definitely the nicest ice mob I've met. Say, do you think you could talk to the other one I know and tell him to stop trying to freeze me? Sure thing. I'll let him know that's not nice. He's just over here in another part of the mountains. From day 9 to day 10, the gorilla showed me to the lair of the Icy Creeper, a powerful ice mob that seemed to like to cause trouble. Gorilla seemed worried for me. That's how I knew Icy Creeper would be trouble. Are you sure you could duck him out of being mean, Zozo? I can certainly try. I left Gorilla behind and approached the Icy Creeper. His attention was on me immediately, but he didn't speak. He looked like I would need to talk first. Hey, I'm Ice Spider Zozo. I heard you've been trying to freeze the gorilla, and they'd like you to stop. Well, that's very nice, but I'm not gonna. I'll freeze anyone I want. That's so rude. What did the gorilla ever do to you? Nothing, but this is a cold world, and I'm one cold, tough customer. If that gorilla doesn't like it, he can go to another mountain. Don't make me fight you, Icy Creeper. I'd like to see you try. I fired my ice blast at the Icy Creeper, but it seemed like he was even colder than me because it barely did any damage. His own ice blast took off a bunch of my hearts. In a battle between ice creatures, I was definitely the loser for now. I ran back to the gorilla, sad that I couldn't defeat the Icy Creeper. I promised Gorilla that I'd let him stay in my base for now and come back to the gravelly mountains to defeat Icy Creeper at a later time. From day 11 to day 12, I returned to my base and began renovating the living space so that the gorilla had a place to live. I used a lot of stone bricks so it wouldn't be too different from the mountain he had left behind. Once I had built the room, I went to see the gorilla and showed him where he could stay. Thanks for letting me stay here, Zozo. I thought you could use some more storage space, so I did a bit of building on my own. It turned out that the gorilla really had built a room that was perfect for storing extra items. He also built a furnace that would heat up the room where he and the mages would be staying. Oh yeah, I guess you guys need to stay warm. Either way, that's very impressive work. I call it the home away from home. Oh, I hope I get to see the mountains again before the world ends. It's not going to end. I'll stop it. I hope so. That necromancer Bryce has been plotting world destruction for a long time, actually. He's tried all sorts of spells to do it, and they've never worked. This one might, though, and the idea of that is really scary. It did sound scary, and I wasted no time getting better materials to help defend myself in case Bryce showed up. Down in the mining area of the base, I went digging for some iron to upgrade my tools. I found some iron ore, which I smelted into iron ingots, then crafted into an iron pickaxe and an iron sword. Back on the surface, I tamed some sheep from the nearby glowing ancient forest and built a farm for them. If that furnace fails, there's always wool sweaters. From day 13 to day 15, I sought out Illusioner Allen for some more advice on how to complete Necromancer Bryce's challenge. I want to save the world as soon as I can, Allen. Is the spell ready yet? If only magic were that simple, Zozo. The truth is that Bryce's destruction spell is linked to you now. The only way to weaken it is for you to become stronger. How do I do that? When you defeated Bryce's skeleton henchman before, some of the spell's magic transferred into you. If you can defeat a more powerful one, it could happen again. I went back to the gravelly mountains in the hopes of finding another undead mob to fight. Come and get me! I don't fear you, skeletons! As if answering my call to battle, a skeleton vanguard came charging across the mountain terrain towards me. Spider of ice! Spider of ice! The time has come for sacrifice! I hit the advancing skeleton vanguard with an ice blast, which slowed the undead down. I was able to hit him with another before he got into melee range. Time to get a taste of my new weapon. 
At that point, I brought out my iron sword and slashed the skeleton vanguard with some powerful hits. The skeleton vanguard crumbled and dropped a health potion to boot. This potion must contain some more of Bryce's magic. I drank the potion and felt my power increase dramatically. My number of hearts doubled and became 60, and I gained the magical ability to turn invisible like see-through ice. From day 16 to day 19, I continued my exploration into a brand new part of the world that I'd never seen before, the Great Lake Isles. As I crawled around this breathtaking new biome, I came across an abandoned book that contained information about the destruction spell that Necromancer Bryce had cast. A spell of destruction cast by a necromancer must be confirmed with the sacrifice of an ice spider. For this reason, an ice spider that survives the casting of the spell can prevent the destruction of the world by being at the center of a spell of life, which is made to protect the world. I wasn't sure exactly what that meant, but it sounded like there was a way to turn the tide of destruction. I excitedly began to leave the Great Lake Isles when some more skeleton vanguards ambushed me to try and get me to be sacrificed. Spider of Ice, Spider of Ice, the time has come for s Yeah, 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 sacrifice. You creeps must have followed me from the mountains. I used my iron sword and I pelted the mobs with ice blasts until they were all destroyed. From day 20 to day 22, I realized that my powers were far stronger now that I had grown into a bigger ice spider. I tested my metal against some specters in the glowing ancient forest, chopping them down with my iron sword. They weren't that difficult to defeat, but the fact that they were here meant that bad omens were on the horizon. Dead becoming more common could be a sign of world destruction being on its way. I did some more mining for iron in the base cavern and grabbed enough ore to make the ingots for an iron chestplate. Now that I'm this much stronger, I bet I could stand up to the icy creeper. I returned to the icy creeper's lair in the gravelly mountains to confront the mob with my new abilities and gear. Have you learned how cold the world is yet, Zozo? No, I have learned that the world has good people in it that don't deserve to be frozen or destroyed. I fired my icy blast at the icy creeper, and this time, I was the one dealing damage. I had become a colder, more powerful being. Never freeze the gorilla or anyone else ever again. All right, Zozo, I give. I'll be nice. The icy creeper ran away, never to be mean again and never to be seen again. Upon driving away from that other ice mob, I saw a flashback to Bryce as a younger necromancer, just learning his first spells. The world is a cold and cruel place. I know. I'll destroy it so nobody has to live in a cold, cruel world. Yes, he was similar to the icy creeper in a couple of ways. If only he knew that the world wasn't as cold and cruel as he thought it was. From day 23 to day 26, I returned to the base, feeling victorious. I made a beeline for the gorilla to give him the good news. I taught that icy creeper a lesson he won't forget anytime soon. I promise you that you won't be having any trouble with him now. Wow, you are one heroic ice spider, Zozo. I'm really checking my prejudices right now. Also, I made you a gift. In case you didn't notice it on the way in, I made a perimeter wall to defend the base. Somehow, I totally had missed the perimeter wall. It was awesome, and we do a great job at repelling the roving hordes of the undead. The base is well defended. Maybe now it's time to make sure my body is better defended. I went back to the mining cavern and collected up some more iron ore that I then took back to my base and smelted into iron ingots. I used these to make the rest of my armor set. You may not be able to see the armor on me, but believe me, it's there. From day 27 to day 31, I returned to the Great Lake Isles, wanting to make sure that I'd wiped out the Skeleton Vanguard Scourge completely. The more territory I can take back from the Necromancer Bryce, the less power and resources he has to complete his dark ritual. And it seems like my earlier work had paid off, because I couldn't see a Skeleton Vanguard anywhere. Instead, what I found was a large and smart-looking golem. Hello there, good sir. Say, I've heard quite a bit about a certain ice spider lately. Your name wouldn't happen to be Zozo, would it? Um, that depends. What would you do if I was Zozo? I'd congratulate you. I'm the Librarian Golem. I travel across the overworld, giving books to those who need them. And the skeleton vanguards working for that blasted necromancer had gotten in the way of my very important mission for far too long. If you are Zozo, then you are responsible for many needy people getting the books they so crave. Well, in that case, I am Zozo. Why don't you come back to my base with me? You seem like you'd be a valuable ally. Of course, as long as there's a place where I can read. I returned to my base with the librarian golem and constructed a new room for him to sleep in. After completing it, I realized how dull and drab the base looked. It needed a personal touch. 
I harvested some wool from my sheep farm and turned them into a bunch of cool banners that I hung up around the different buildings of my base. Looking snazzy. But my joy was short-lived as Illusioner Alan ran in with frantic news. Zozo, you need to come with me immediately. Windcaller Wendy is under attack. From day 32 to day 35, Illusioner Alan and I ran as fast as we could to reach the campfire in the glowing ancient forest where the Windcaller liked to hang out. But by the time we arrived, it was already too late. A vicious gang of skeleton vanguards had already outnumbered and destroyed him. No! <laughs> we serve our master well. Everyone who attempts to defend you will be destroyed, Zozo. Nobody will stand in the way of your sacrifice. We will destroy this entire world. Not if I have anything to say about it. Powered by pure rage, I went in there with all my weapons and powers and wiped out every single one of the skeleton vanguards. In the end, all that was left was myself and Illusioner Alan. This is bad, Zozo. The Windcaller was a powerful mage and an asset to our operation. Now that she is gone, the danger grows significantly. But we can't give up, Alan. If we give up, then nobody will stop Necromancer Bryce. We need to fight back against him with everything we have. From day 36 to day 39, I went out to the gravelly mountains to wander around and collect my thoughts. I was afraid about everything that had happened, but I couldn't show it in front of everyone who was working for me. Necromancer Bryce and his men are way more dangerous than I thought. My thoughts were interrupted when I ran into an incredibly strange creature, a melon golem, which I didn't even know was a thing. What? You never see a melon golem before? You don't like melons or something? No, oh, no, no, I, I love melons. I've just never seen a melon golem before. I'm sorry if I've upset you. If you have a favor you need doing, I'd be happy to see to it and give you a hand. Well, now that you mention it, there was an obsidian golem who was giving me some real trouble. Would you mind taking care of him before he hurts me or anyone else? Of course, I'll get right to it. I turned on my invisibility powers and used it to search through the gravelly mountains until I discovered the obsidian golem. I used the element of surprise and approached him from behind, attacking him with everything I had. In the end, I managed to defeat him after a tough battle. Then I returned to the melon golem and told him that his bully was gone. Hey, that's great news. I used to be able to trust the other golems, but a lot of them defected to the necromancer Bryce as most of them are hardy enough to survive the cold. So some golems are working with the necromancer now? That's not good news. You point out the obvious a lot, you know. From day 40 to day 43, I returned back to my base, pleasantly surprised by some improvements that Illusioner Alan had made to the base. Zozo, I've made very good friends with the librarian golem. He's a wonderful chap, and we've been doing lots of discussions around the arcane arts. So I installed a sizable collection of bookshelves and couches so he can really enjoy himself here. It's incredibly wholesome that you two have become such good friends. And he's not the only friend I'd like to stay here. I improved the base by adding a barracks, so I could invite more of my illusion of friends. The more mages we have at the base, the easier it will be to defend you from the necromancer. That sounds like a good idea to me, Alan. Not long after, a small group of other illusioners arrived, and I greeted them and escorted them to their rooms. Not long after, the librarian golem approached me with a new quest. Zozo! As you may have heard on the grapevine, or perhaps the melon vine, some golems defected from the overworld and joined up with that dastardly necromancer. Two in particular are the Endstone Golem and the Netherite Golem out in the Great Lake Isles. Perhaps, if you're able to defeat him, it will weaken the necromancer's power in another territory. That's an awesome idea, Librarian Golem. I'll set off immediately. From day 44 to day 49, I set off into the Great Lake Isles to find one of the evil golems that had been working for Necromancer Bryce. I want to reduce the power of the Necromancer's spell in whatever way that I can. I thought I saw the glow of magic from one of the islands and made a stealthy approach. To my surprise, it wasn't an endstone golem at all, but Necromancer Bryce himself. He was muttering something, so I got closer to hear what it was. This pathetic world does not deserve mercy. It only deserves cold destruction, and my spell will be that destruction. Soon, the hastening will be upon us. Couldn't let him stand there and say such terrible things. Take that back, you dastardly necromancer. Oh, it's you. You're the ice spider that dares to defy me. It seems my undead have thus far been unable to sacrifice you. Why do you need to sacrifice me so badly anyway? What's in it for you if the entire world is destroyed? Destroying the entire world is a thankless job, but somebody has to do it. Anyway, I've got a brand new caliber of minion now. Prepare to meet my netherite golem. 
The necromancer Bryce vanished into a cloud of magical smoke, and in his place, a netherite golem rose to its full towering height. Greetings. I am the netherite golem, and I will be sacrificing today. The other golems told me that baddies like you were bad news. Put up your big netherite dukes, and let's have a good clean fight, said the spider to the golem. I ice blasted my opponent and scurried around, avoiding his attacks. I used my invisibility to sneak in close and attack with my iron sword. The netherite golem was very strong, and he managed to hit me a couple times, dealing many hearts of damage. But I had hearts to spare now, and this fight was far from over. From day 50 to day 53, we briefly stopped to talk. You're going to be sacrificed, Ice Spider. I'm going to crack you like ice and then squash you like a spider. Oh yeah? Well, you're a netherite golem and, uh, never mind, I can't think of anything. I fired off a couple of ice blasts, then I used my iron sword to hit the netherite golem. With one more ice blast, I froze the netherite golem and brought the fight to a close with a sword strike. The netherite golem dispersed, leaving behind some mystical diamonds, which were stronger than any material I had gathered thus far. Better hang on to these so I can make a powerful tool out of these diamonds later. With the netherite golem defeated, I felt some of Necromancer Bryce's magic leaving the Great Lake Isles. From day 54 to day 57, I found the other evil golem that had chosen to serve Necromancer Bryce, the Endstone Golem, the exact golem that the library golem had sent me out to fight. This mean Endstone fighting machine was just as tough as the netherite golem I had fought before, so I knew I had to use similar strategies to take it down. Ice Spider Zozo, Golem Slayer! My invisibility proved to be a great way of avoiding attacks, and a mixture of Ice Blast and Iron Sword attacks sealed the deal! Both of the Golem defectors have been defeated now. I can feel the Great Lake Isles are peaceful now. I returned to my base in the glowing ancient forest so that I could tell the tale of my victory to the Library Golem. Well done, Ice Spider Zozo. Without his golems, Necromancer Bryce has lost a major facet of his evil forces. The destruction of the entire world is that much closer to being avoided. I'm just doing my part to stop the spell. In anticipation of your return, I did some research into the original spell books that contain the destruction spell. It says that the ice spider needed for the spell must come from the ice spike's biome. Have you ever been there before, Zozo? Not that I can recall, but if it's my homeland, maybe I can learn something more about the spell by going there someday. From day 58 to day 62, I used the mystical diamonds that had been dropped by the netherite golem to make myself a diamond sword. Once crafted, the librarian gave me a Frostwalker enchantment book to enchant my new diamond sword with frost. What a neat enchantment and very fitting for an ice spider. I guess magic comes naturally to me. Because of my new sword, I was inspired to seek out more diamonds down in the mine. Using my iron pickaxe, I dredged up a few more diamonds and made myself a diamond pickaxe. I decided that was enough mining for now, and I came back to see that the living area looked much nicer, and there was even a brand new fireplace. Illusioner Alan was standing by the fireplace, feeling its warmth. It looks amazing here. Is this an illusion? I'm always telling you, Zozo, magic can't do everything. These changes to the base are 100% real. Wow, thanks, Alan. Building this base was such a great idea. I really like living here, so I'm glad I could make it better for everyone. From day 63 to day 66, I was doing some more diamond mining when the gorilla who lives in my base came to visit me. Hey, Zozo, the librarian golem told me that you're originally from the Icebergs. I actually know how to get there. You do? Well, that's great. I have been meaning to take a trip out there at some point. I'll give you the directions. Maybe you'll find out if you've got any family out there. Following the gorilla's directions, I made my way to the ice spikes. I didn't see any ice spiders, but maybe I would meet a friendly face if I looked around. But the first face I saw didn't appear to be that friendly. It was a mountaineer with a wicked gleam in his eyes. I'm warning you, buddy. You don't want to mess with this ice spider. I have the home field advantage. I don't want to fight you. This gleam in my eye is the gleam of adventure. I'm Mountaineer Monty, and I'm looking to climb the tallest peak in the ice spikes. The tallest peak? I bet I could see everything from up there. Count me in. Perfect. With an ice spider helping me up, I'll be able to get to the top of the tallest peak in no time. From day 67 to day 70, I joined Mountaineer Monty, and we both climbed around on the ice spikes together, searching for the tallest peak. How will we know if the ice spike that we're climbing is the tallest or not, Monty? We won't know until we get to the top. Keep on crawling on these walls, ice spider. We went higher and higher until we found a ledge on the side of an even taller peak. Could this be the one? 
That's when a leap leaf jumped down from the upper ledges and started to attack. I fired an ice blast at the mob, but it dodged away. This leap leaf was faster than I expected, so I'd have to outsmart it. I turned invisible and waited for the leap leaf to land on the ground. I dashed in and hit it with my diamond sword, dealing a bunch of damage. The moment it jumped, I fired an ice blast directly at it, defeating it for good. Mountaineer Monty was impressed with my win. That was great! And also leap leaves only live on the tallest peak, so we must be there! Let's keep on climbing so we can find out! Within a few minutes, we had risen to the top of the entire ice spikes biome. This was the most beautiful thing I had ever seen in all my days as an ice spider! Thank you for being here with me! Down below, I saw what looked like the lair of a necromancer, a wicked and terrible base! Necromancer Bryce must be here in the ice spikes! Did he find me here? From day 71 to day 74, I descended the peak of the tallest mountain and began to travel through the ice spikes in the direction of the evil lair. I never expected my history with Bryce would go back so far. I need to find out why his lair is here, what happened to the other ice spiders, and of course, how I can save the world from destruction. And if you want to help me save the world, remember to search ZOZO to find more of my adventures. Make sure to tell me what you want me to play as next. Down at the base of the mountain, I wandered through a snowy blizzard, only to be confronted by Necromancer Bryce! You've returned home, Ice Spider Zozo, but it's not your home anymore! It's my home, and soon there will be nobody home in the entire world! Your destruction spell will never work, Bryce! Not as long as I survive without being sacrificed! I drew my sword and turned invisible, waiting for an opportunity to strike! Necromancer Bryce only laughed! He was not threatened by me at all! Ha ha ha! Foolish Zozo! You don't understand what it means that I am here in the Ice Spikes! It means that I've already sacrificed another Ice Spider! My spell is secure! I froze in place, not from the cold, but from the shock of what Bryce had said! No, you already sacrificed an ice spider, you evil monster! Bryce turned toward the spell and blasted me with a powerful spell that took off almost all of my heart! He was about to fire off another, so I ran away as fast as I could! From day 75 to day 78, I scurried back to the base and immediately shut myself away in the coldest room of the base! I had failed! The whole point of going to the ice spikes was to learn more about my origin! But now, I had learned something that made me feel completely hopeless! The entire world really was going to be destroyed, and there was nothing I could do to stop it! Never say never, Zozo! It was the librarian golem! They had come to visit me in my time of regret! But all of the other ice spiders are gone! Necromancer Bryce sacrificed them! I don't think that's exactly what has happened, Zozo! Bryce was trying to catch you off guard so he could sacrifice you. He still needs you for his place, and when he comes for you, we'll be ready. The librarian golem showed me a watchtower that had been installed on the base. It would be an ideal countermeasure to any intruding undead sent by Bryce. Thanks, library golem. And you're right, the world isn't doomed yet. Later on, I consulted Illusioner Alan to see what magical spells he had been working on during my travels. Zozo, I have used all of my magic to create this Kaitha. It is a weapon that will make you unstoppable in battle. Thank you, that's exactly what I need. The moment I took the Kyther, I felt a great surge of power within me. I grew into the ultimate ice spider, the true king of the ice spikes. I had 100 hearts and the ability to warp short distances, combining that ability with my invisibility to really catch enemies off guard. From day 79 to day 84, I made my way back to the ice spikes, trusting that the transformation brought on by Illusioner Allen's spell would give me the ultimate power, and that the library golem wasn't wrong about there being more to learn about my past. In my mighty ice spider form, nothing in the ice spikes could rival my strength. Some specters tried to swoop down and challenge me, but I effortlessly destroyed them with my ice blast. I traveled some more through the cold biome of the ice spikes, eventually finding an isologer native to this region. Hello there, Isologer. Please, call me Isologer Ike. It's quite nice to meet a spider of ice. There used to be a lot more of you protecting the ice spikes. So I've heard. That was before the necromancer sacrificed them. Oh, there was no sacrifice. Your ancestors fought against him bravely, down to the last spider. I kept one of their helmets, too. You should have it. Ike gave me a diamond helmet, which I proudly equipped. I guess there really was more to the story than I thought. From day 85 to day 89, my base was attacked by the skeleton vanguard. I arrived just in time to fend them off with weapons and ice blasts. Spider of ice, spider of ice, the time has come for sacrifice. Ha! 
That confirms it. You still need a sacrifice. And I'm the last spider standing. You'll never take me out. With the confidence I had developed in my ultimate ice spider form, I demolished the skeleton vanguard one by one until the last of them went running back to the ice spikes. Spider of Ice, your sacrifice will now be done by Necromancer Price. I'd like to see him try. I chased the skeleton vanguard to the edge of my base where he kept running onward. It was there that I met a fungus thrower who was standing next to a dugout pool of water. Oh, please, I spider so-so. My swimming pool is way too warm. Can you provide an ice blast to cool it off? Why, certainly, my fungus-throwing friend. I shot the pool with an ice blast, freezing it over. Oops, sorry, now it's more of an ice rink. No, I like this better. I'll call my friends and we'll play some hockey. From day 90 to day 94, I followed the skeleton vanguard through the ice spikes all the way to the necropolis where necromancer Bryce would be waiting for me. Bryce, Bryce, we need your advice. As the skeleton vanguard approached the necropolis, it was obliterated by an attack from an armored pillager. Never send a skeleton to do my job. And what is your job? Killing spiders by the dozen. Me and the rest of my pillager crew fought the ice spiders in this area back when they dared to defy necromancer Bryce. You mean that it was you who wiped out all the rest of the ice spiders and you're working for Bryce? I'm going to freeze on you. I fired several ice blasts, but the armored pillager tanked them all and hit me with the same powerful attack it used to destroy the skeleton vanguard. It dealt a decent amount of damage, so I warped away to avoid taking more. I faced many ice spiders just as big as you. But you've never faced me. Gathering my courage, I warped back and swung my diamond sword into the armored pillager, returning the damage I took and then some. From day 95 to day 97, the armored pillager still wouldn't let up, and I was starting to see that his claims of taking down all the other ice spiders wasn't all talk. My ice blasts weren't very effective, so I mostly relied on my sword strikes to deal damage. My warp and invisibility powers helped me dodge most of the armored pillager's attacks so that I could hold onto my hearts. Why can't you let me crush you like those other worthless ice spiders? It's time you learned that those lives you trampled were never worthless. I warped all around the armored pillager and barraged him with sword attacks until he collapsed at long last. Darn it, you have beaten me. Truth is, you spiders fought very well. I was the only survivor among the pillagers. If you lost everyone too, why are you being such a mean guy about it? We could have talked this out. Necromancer Bryce was going to destroy the world anyway. We thought we had to listen to him or he'd destroy us first. That Bryce is ruthless beyond anything you've seen. After he hired us pillagers to wipe out the spiders, he had them save one remaining ice spider egg so that he could use the ice spider that hatched for his destruction spell. That ice spider must have been you. The armored pillager died, leaving behind a key to the lair. At that moment, I realized I had avenged my people. Well, almost. Bryce stole me away, planned to use me for his spell, and destroy the world I've only now come to know. I will stop him! On day 98, I returned to the base to heal my injuries from the battle with the armored pillager. So much had happened since I started my journey, and we were only a couple days from the day that the destruction spell would end the world. But the words that carried me all this way still rang in my ears. As long as I survive, it isn't over. I spoke to the librarian Golem, who was also hopeful about our chances of stopping the destruction spell. No sacrifice was made, and if you defeat Bryce, he'll never be able to cast another destruction spell. This could be your chance to save the entire world. I will do it, for the world and for all the ice spiders that fought bravely against him. I wanted to make sure the powers of my magically induced final form were stable, so I went to Illusioner Alan to confirm. Your magical Kyther seems to be working, Alan. Oh, Zozo, what have I always said? Magic can't do everything. You took that form on your own. My great illusion was convincing you that my weapon was the reason. Wow, I didn't expect that. You truly are a skilled illusioner, Alan. But I didn't leave the base without any new gear. The gorilla made sure I had full diamond armor for the battle with Necromancer Bryce. You're a hero, Ice Spider Zozo. I really wish I could have met more Ice Spiders. As long as there's a world, there's a way. I'll make sure the world is safe after I stop Bryce. Go get that evil creep. Remember the path I showed you through the gravelly mountains. On day 99, I was traveling through the gravelly mountains toward the ice spikes on my way to the showdown with Necromancer Bryce. I was intercepted by a whole bunch of skeleton vanguards who seemed really eager to sacrifice me as always. Bryce really rolled out the welcome mat early, huh? Spider of ice, spider of ice, must we say it thrice? It has to be time for your sacrifice. 
Even though my strength, my hearts, my gear, and my magic all surpassed theirs, the skeleton vanguards descended on me in great numbers. They're slowing me down. I won't be able to reach Bryce by the day of destruction. I had to retreat as quickly as I could. It's when I ran into the Mountaineer, and he wanted to fight those nasty skeletons for me so I could take down the big boss who started it all. Go on now, Ice Spider! We climbed the tallest peak together, now face your greatest challenge with pride! On day 100, I used the key to the lair and entered the inner sanctum of Necromancer Bryce! The day of destruction is at hand, and here you are, allowing yourself to be sacrificed! There will be no sacrifice and no destruction! We traded a series of blasts, his necromancy blast and my ice blast. We each took a bit of damage, then I turned invisible. You crushed my people, but I'm taking back the ice spikes and the entire world from your evil. You would fight to protect a world that took away your family? The world didn't do that, necromancer Bryce. Yeah, that was you. I reappeared and attacked his blind spot with my diamond sword. He began charging up his most powerful spell yet. It was the same spell he almost defeated me with the last time we fought. Necromancer Bryce let the spell of doom fly at me. I waited until the very last second, then I used my warp ability to move out of the way and appear right behind him. You missed me, and now it's over for you. I swung my diamond sword repeatedly with all my might, destroying the necromancer before he could destroy anything else. This world would live on, and so would I. On day one, I spawned in as a fire spider. Oh cool, I got eight legs and four hearts. But whoa, I'm not a regular spider. I'm a fire spider. That means I have to avoid water no matter what. I should probably look around. I started testing out my new abilities. I can jump high, run super fast, and climb up walls. Woohoo! Just as I was jumping from tree to tree, a swarm of tarantula hawks started to attack. Ah, where did you come from? Quickly, I jumped off of the tree and started running away. But these guys were fast. They even took out some of my hearts. Ouch, I need those. Realizing that I couldn't outrun these guys forever, I decided I needed to fight. I wonder if I have something that could help me fight these tarantula hawks. Just then I looked into my inventory and saw I had an item, web shot, throw at your enemies to attack or stun them. This should work. Quickly, I put this ability into effect and started throwing webs at the tarantula hawks. Whoa, this is awesome. I managed to bring down several of the tarantula hawks with my web shot until there was only one left. He quickly fled before I could take him down. Ha, and stay out you flying fiend. I proceeded to look around a little more before I decided to call it a night. On day two, I woke up hungry and decided to make my first web. I placed it in the tree and waited. Soon, I caught a fly. Mmm, tasty. Then I went and took a look around. I stumbled upon a hole in the ground and decided to check it out. Maybe I can find some more fire spiders here. Well, I couldn't find any more fire spiders, I managed to find some stone, but I couldn't mine it because it required tools. I better go get some resources. Just as I was about to leave, a bunch of badgers started to attack. Ah, hey, what's the big deal? These guys were tough, but I managed to fling web shots at them and managed to defeat them. They dropped some loot in the process. I picked up a stone pickaxe and sword. Oh, these will come in handy. With the pickaxe, I mined the stone and even found some iron that I could use for later. Wow, this hole is great. After checking to make sure there were no more badgers, I decided to set up camp in the hole. After clearing out some space, I set up a little place for myself, and even started to build other houses, just in case some more spiders were to come. On day three, I climbed out of the hole and started gathering wood from the surrounding trees. Just as I was about to bring down one of the trees, I heard a noise. Hey, stop that down there. Suddenly, a pigeon flew down from the top. What do you think you are doing? Oh, sorry, I didn't know anyone was living in this tree. Well, there is. You can't just go around destroying everything you see like some kind of barbarian. I didn't mean any harm, I promise. He sighed. Just be careful next time. Just as the pigeon was talking, a falcon came out of nowhere and started to attack. Oh no, not this guy. You better run, little fire spider. Instead, I used my web to attack the falcon and knock him out of the sky. Oh, thank you so much. That falcon has been attacking me and my friends for a long time. You're most welcome. I'm always looking for ways I can help. Why was he attacking you? He is a servant of the Lizard King, the evil ruler who enslaves animals with fear. Oh no, that's terrible. This Lizard King sounds like he's a real handful to deal with. My name is Percy, and I would be happy to help you with anything you need. Thank you, I could use help. You know, I have a place that you and your friends can stay to keep away from falcons. It's underground, and I'm still building it. Would you like to come? Most of the time, pigeons don't like living underground, but that sounds like the safe idea. On days four and five, I helped Percy put together some houses for him and his friends. This place is going to look great, Zozo. A safe haven away from the Lizard King. You're right. I'm going to have to see if I can get more critters out of danger. I also don't know where any fire spiders are. 
Well, in the meantime, I will stay here and continue working. Before you go, I wanted to give you this. Percy gave me some iron armor and a sword, made from the iron I had found earlier. I thought it best for your journey. Take care, my fiery spider friend. Thanks, Percy. I will return. Soon, I was off to find the Lizard King, when all of a sudden, the tarantula hawk I fought on the first day returned with even more of his friends. We shall have our revenge on you. They all started swarming me with their stingers. Ouch, leave me alone. With the new sword, I managed to defeat most of the tarantula hawks, but the main tarantula hawk was heading right for me. I will defeat you and take you to the Lizard King myself. He was tougher to beat than the other tarantula hawks. I even took some damage from him. You may be strong, but I won't be defeated. Dodging his blows with my speed and jumping ability, I kept on striking him until at last he was defeated. As he disappeared, he dropped some bronze armor as well as a beaker of poison. If I'm going to come in contact with any more of the Lizard King's minions, I'm gonna need this. On day six through eight, I continued my journey to find the Lizard King. Along the way, I managed to find a village. Hello, anyone here? I went through all the buildings, gathering supplies where I could find them, but could not find anyone. How could an entire village just vanish like this? I started hearing what sounded like voices from one of the center buildings. Maybe there are some villagers still here. After following the voices, I discovered who was in the building. It was the Lizard King. He had on a huge crown and had big red eyes. Yikes, those are gonna haunt my nightmares. Gathering up what courage I had, I charged towards the Lizard King. Hey, why are you being so cruel to all the creatures of this land? They just wanna live peaceful lives, free from bullies like you. The Lizard King looked at me with those red eyes. The tiny fire spider who defeated my tarantula hawks. You will pay for your actions, attack! Then all of a sudden, the floor started shaking and from out of the ground spawned a giant desert centipede. Uh-oh, this could be bad. The centipede was strong. It had over 20 hearts and it was quick. It's a good thing I can jump and climb or this thing would surely take me out. Then I remembered I had the beaker of poison and prepared to use it on the centipede. Just as I was about to use it, the centipede attacked and knocked the beaker out of my hand, shattering on the floor. Oh no! The centipede grabbed onto me, shaking me around with its mandibles and shaking the hearts out of me. This is not good. Just as I was about to lose my last heart, the Lizard King commanded he let me go. That's enough. I still need subjects to rule. You really thought you could defeat me? Huh. Come back again when you are worthy. <laughs> that fight did a lot of damage to me, and all of a sudden, I blacked out. On days 9 and 10, I awoke to a different location. It looked like one of the houses in the village, only it was really damaged and there were webs on the walls. Ah! Spiders! Oh, wait, I'm a spider too. I climbed around the damaged house to see if any more spiders were around. Hello? Any other spiders around here? Regular or fire type? Any will do. Or anyone? Preferably ones who don't want to squish me? I looked around a little more and eventually I spotted what appeared to be a small, normal spider. Hey, where am I? Oh good, you're awake. It's good to see you up. Where's the Lizard King? Where's the centipede? You fought the Lizard King and his centipede? It's a miracle you're still alive. When I found you, they were both gone. I was really worried you weren't going to wake up, but couldn't not help a spider in need. We brought you here to look after you. We? Who's we? Well, me and my brothers and sisters. Huh? Brothers and sisters? There's more of you? Oh yes, at least 700. We live in dark, shadowy areas near here, under the protection of Daddy Longlegs. Would you like to meet him? Sure. Oh, and what's your name? Marcy. I'm a jumping spider. Indeed. Lead the way, Marcy. On days 11 to 12, Marcy led me to a secret passageway where we climbed down into a dark hall. Through the hall, we came upon the cave of Daddy Longlegs. It was surrounded by several different spiders of all different types and sizes. Daddy Longlegs, here is the fire spider who fought the centipede. He has healed and wishes to meet with you. Proceed, good spider. I am Zozo, and I come to help fight against the evil of the Lizard King. You are indeed brave, Zozo, but I am afraid the Lizard King cannot be defeated. Huh? What do you mean? How can he not be defeated? He controls the predators of the animal kingdom, forcing us spiders to live underground. Any attempt we have tried to fight against him, he takes out numbers of us. I'm afraid it's too risky for our survival. I understand your concern, Daddy Longlegs, but we cannot keep living in fear. Someone has to do something. If nobody else will, then I will. But I know together we can do better, be stronger. Some of us might be squashed in a moment, but surely he can't stop all of us. Then I could hear Marcy cheering from the back. Huzzah! Huzzah! Her cheering led to all the other spiders starting to cheer as well. Huzzah! Daddy Longlegs looked convinced and agreed to help me. All right, Zozo, you have made your point. I will send some spiders to help you on your journey. Perhaps we truly can defeat the Lizard King. Three spiders volunteered to help me on my quest. First was Taylor, a massive tarantula. <laughs> yeah, dude. Then there was Bruno, an orb-weaving spider. 
Do you need a web? I got a web. It's a nice web. Did I tell you about my web? This guy really likes his web. Yeah, man. Finally, there was Scarlet. She was a black widow. I can turn anyone's life into a tragedy. Well, I hope that will come in handy for us. Nice to meet all of you. Together, let's take this guy down. On days 13 to 15, we arrived back at my whole base. I didn't know how Percy and his friends were going to take there being more spiders, so I proceeded with caution. Hello, Zozo. Hey, Percy. Wow, you got a lot of work done. This base is looking even better than I thought it could. Thanks. I managed to convince some other birds and animals to come make this the new home. You've done great. Hey, I wanted to tell you something. Sure. What is... Oh, more spiders. What the... What are these animals doing here? They look tasty to me. Yeah, dude. Before this tension was to become a battle, I had to calm down both sides. Listen, in order for us to defeat the Lizard King, we must stay strong together, no matter what species we are. Also, no eating the birds. Yeah. All right, sorry. After that was over, I managed to get everyone working together to create a giant statue of our hero. I hoped it could be seen as a symbol of justice and goodness for all walks of life. Can you tell what we're building? On day 16 to 19, I got a chance to meet all the new members of the base. Hey, how are you? Good to see ya. Welcome. I even ran into some unexpected guests. Oh no, the badgers again. Wait, we're sorry for attacking you earlier. We just didn't have any other place to go. We saw how you built this place and your friend Percy said it was okay for us to stay. So wait, we're all on the same team? Yep, we're also really sorry for attacking you earlier. It's all right. I guess I can understand you being scared of someone trying to harm you. Welcome to the base. I have said that no matter our differences, we've got to work together to defeat the Lizard King. Thank you. Just as I was going around meeting new people, I saw Marcy run in looking for me. I am delivering gifts for you for your journey. These are from Daddy Longlegs. Marcy presented me with a new silver armor and sword with a special ability, Poisonous Attack. Ah. What would I do without you and Daddy Longlegs? This will be great for my journey. Thanks, Marcy. You're welcome. Say, this place is pretty nice. Do you think I can tell the other spiders about it? Sure. It's not quite finished, though. But maybe when I'm done, you guys can come see it. There's a lot of you, so I've got to make sure everyone is really impressed. Deal! On days 20 to 22, Taylor, Bruno, Scarlet, and I were off to catch the Lizard King. On the road, Scarlet spotted some signs up ahead. We should be careful. It looks like we are entering into the realm of the ants. Ants? Are they dangerous? They attack in numbers and can overwhelm any creature bigger than they are. Even someone like Taylor? Yeah, dude. Well, then we will definitely be cautious. I can't imagine anything worse than being dogpiled by a bunch of creepy crawlers. We scoured around for a bit, when all of a sudden, a giant zombie praying mantis arose from under the ground. Gosh, he must have been attacked by the ants. Those guys are vicious. Yeah, now we gotta put him out of his misery. Bruno started making a web net to trap the praying mantis in, and Taylor threw it over to the mantis, trapping him. I think we got him. Just then, the mantis started tearing his way through the web net. Don't worry, guys, I got this. I jumped toward the praying mantis and started using my new sword. Say your prayers now, mantis. Within a few strikes, he was finally defeated, and I felt something inside me start to change. I increased in size and even had more hearts. My attacks felt stronger too, infused with even more fiery goodness. On days 23 to 26, we finally got to the ant hill. We need to be cautious. The ants could attack if we are spotted. And I don't know about you guys, but I'm not interested in becoming a zombie fire spider today. Just then, a fireball flew overhead. It was the ant guards, and they were shooting at us with trebuchets. Oh, talk about fire ants! All of a sudden, Bruno started working on what appeared to be a giant slingshot. Oh, great idea! Scarlet had some TNT, as well as some flint and steel. We decided that would work perfectly for returning fire. Bombs away! We took out the trebuchet and sent the ants running into their hill. Way to go, team! On days 27 to 31, we decided to go inside the hill. Wow, these guys have been busy. Inside, we found a lot of cool items that I could use for the compound and the statue. Glowstones, I can use these. As we journeyed deeper into the caves, we saw a hidden message on the wall. Subscribe? Huh, that's not a bad idea, honestly. Yeah, dude. A little further, and we began to see what appeared to be a story by the ants. Apparently, the queen ant was tricked by the Lizard King, and now he has a puppet queen acting for him. That's terrible. These ants should not be under the control of a puppet ruler. We need to do something. All of a sudden, something occurred. Ants began to crawl out from the walls. Get back! I mean it! No matter how hard we fought, the ants were too numerous, and they captured us. On days 32 to 35, the ants led us to the deeper parts of the ant hill. Where are you taking us? I kept trying to talk to them, but they would not respond. It was as if something was wrong with them completely. Hello, can you hear me? Eventually, we came to what I suppose is their throne room. The queen ant sat there looking sinister. Spiders? How disgusting! You will make a fine specimen for the Lizard King. 
Though my children and I are getting hungry. I'm getting pretty tired of creatures telling me they want to eat me. How about I give you something to eat instead? I looked up and I could see what looked like a chandelier made of glowstones. I fired a web shot at it and the whole thing started to come crashing down. No, not the chandelier. I fell hard onto the queen ant, squishing her. Whoa, what a way to go. On days 36 to 39, we began leaving the hill. The hill was even bigger than I remembered as we wove through many different hallways. We got lost more than once. Man, how could one place look the same at every turn? When we finally decided on a place to go, more ants came toward us. If we couldn't get out, we'd be in real trouble. Stay back, we're armed. Well, technically lagged. No, please don't hurt us, and we don't want to hurt you. Okay, well then what is it you do want? We are servants of the true Queen Ant. When you defeated the other queen, we finally freed her, and she wanted to thank you. Well, that's very nice of her. I'm glad she's back on her throne. Feel free to come back anytime. If you have any questions, please let me know. I did have one question. How do we get out? Oh, right. You go up, make a left, and climb out of the big hole in the top. Okay, that seems simple enough. Thanks. No problem. You can climb, right? Uh, spider. Oh, <laughs> right. On days 40 to 43, we thought it would be best to get back to the compound and put these glowstones to good use. Percy was doing a great job building places for the new creatures finding out about this place. If there is one thing we birds know, it is how to make a nest to come home to. You're doing great, Percy. I also thought these could come in handy. Glowstones, excellent. It was starting to look a little dark here. Right away, we got to work using the glowstones to create light fixtures around the compound. I also made sure that these were built strong enough so that no one could get hurt if they were damaged. The last thing we'd want is for there to be another queen ant situation. No one likes to get smushed. When a spider builds something, it is made to last. Also when birds, badgers, and other wildlife chip in on the building, it definitely helps in the long run. On days 44 to 50, I continued working on the statue. I'm really excited about this one and feel like it's coming along really well. Can you tell what the statue is yet? All of a sudden, I can see a little jumping creature appearing in the horizon. Marcy, it's good to see you. Oh, Zozo, I'm glad I found you. I have terrible news. Huh? Oh no, what's the problem? The Lizard King attacked the spider base with an army of scorpions. Scorpions? Really? Yes, they are one of our biggest enemies. That's terrible. I'm so sorry. I really didn't think he'd be bold enough to take on the entire spider nest at one time. I'm sorry I couldn't have stopped him from doing this. So am I. I wanted to tell you so you won't have to have the same fate. Now we have nowhere safe. Wait a minute. Why don't you all come live at my base? Wait, really? Are you sure you won't mind all of us living with you? Of course not. Besides, us spiders need to stick together. Plus, I've got plenty of room here. There's no limit to the amount of houses we can make for everyone. Ha! I see what you did there. I better go tell the other spiders right now. Quickly, I got started gathering more materials and supplies to start building for my new neighbors. I took a good long while to gather the stuff and start building, but it was all worth it. On days 51 to 53, all of the spiders arrived. Whoa, there sure are a lot of you. Welcome. Among the spiders appeared Daddy Longlegs, and I went over to greet him. Hi, Daddy Longlegs. I'm glad to see you're all right. You're all welcome here. Thank you, Zozo, for doing this. You have given the spiders and many others hope. It was my pleasure. The spiders sure are honored and lucky to have a protector like you. Oh no, Zozo. I may have been their protector before, but you are their protector now. However, if you need advice, I will always be around. I will definitely appreciate that. I know you've seen a lot of spiders in your day. I'd never be able to lead anyone as well as you have. Afterwards, I introduced Daddy Longlegs and the other spiders to the rest of the compound. They got along pretty well. I love seeing everyone so happy to make new friends. On days 54 to 57, the whole compound got together to start building walls so no intruders could come in. When most of the building was completed, we decided we should celebrate the new compound community. Daddy Longlegs prepared to give a speech. I am truly thankful that we can all live in harmony thanks to our magnificent friend, Zozo. Oh guys, I appreciate that. While Daddy Longlegs kept speaking, no one noticed a group of scorpions sneaking up behind him. Daddy Longlegs, look out! But he didn't hear me, and one of the scorpions stabbed him in the back with a stinger. Oh no, Daddy Longlegs! The spiders began attacking the scorpions while I tried to lead Daddy Longlegs to safety. Just stay here, you're gonna be fine. No, Zozo, it's time for me to go. What? You can't go, it's not over yet. It's okay, Zozo, take care of them all for me. I will. I stayed with Daddy Longlegs until the end. When I checked back, the spiders won the battle. Sadly, it was up to me to share the sad news. On days 58 to 62, the whole compound worked together to build a memorial for Daddy Longlegs. Rest in peace, Daddy Longlegs. You will be missed by us all. 
I promise I will do what needs to be done. While we were sad at the loss of our friend, we all realized we needed better fortifications. We spent a good portion of the days building up the walls and putting up watchtowers. I was so embarrassed that we were attacked when we thought we were safe. They should protect us, but I just wish I could have done more. Don't go blaming yourself, Sozo. Nobody could have guessed what was going to happen. To take my mind off of all of this, I went back to finish the statue. Maybe this could give us some more hope. Now can you tell who our spider hero is? It's the most famous web slinger of all time. Spider-Man, of course. Just as I completed it, Scarlet showed up and told me a messenger came to see me. We ran to the gate to see it was the ant from the ant hill. Hello, what are you doing here? We heard about your attack. We are sorry for your loss. Thank you. It has been hard for a lot of us. Our queen wanted to give you something for your loss, as well as your fight against the Lizard King. Huh? The ant handed over a wrapped gift and told me to use it wisely. I couldn't wait to see what it was. I will definitely treasure this. Thank you, and thank your queen for me. I shall, and you are most welcome. On day 63 to 66, I opened the package to reveal a bunch of potions. Inside there was a health upgrade potion. I took it right away, and I gained eight more hearts. I took a look at the other potions. Stinger Shock can cause your enemy to be paralyzed and allow you to either heal or attack. Boy, if I ever run into that centipede again, I am gonna use this. I met with my friends and told them that this would be my final mission. Be careful, Sozo. I will. I promise to return. We have lost too many friends for me to fail. Good luck, Zozo. Go end this monster, once and for all. Yeah, dude. I said goodbye to my friends, and then I was off. All I could do was hope that I would see them again soon. On day 67 through 70, I journeyed off to find the Palace of the Lizard King. I first traveled toward the abandoned village where I first fought the centipede. I don't see him anywhere here. While I continued to look around, I spotted what appeared to be an ancient door. Huh, I wonder how long this has been here for. There was an inscription on the door that looked a little faded. I will with water when it rains. When sunlight comes, the water drains. To climb me is to achieve great gains. I quickly realized that it was a riddle and began putting it together. Uh, I got it, a water spout. The answer is a water spout. With this proclamation of the answer, the door cracked open to reveal a chest inside. I opened the box to show a full set of diamond armor and sword. I quickly put them to good use. Yeah, dude. I think I've been hanging out with Taylor a bit too much. On day 71 through 74, I traveled into the rainforest. Just as I was scurrying along the ground, a group of howler monkeys started throwing bananas at me. Oh, whoa, uh, at least it's just bananas. One of the monkeys was huge. He must have been their leader. I started throwing web shots at him, trying to knock him out of the tree. You are not defeating me today. I managed to knock several monkeys out of the trees, forcing them to run away. The big monkey was the only one left. You might be strong, but you won't get me. With one last web shot, I knocked the monkey out of the tree and cornered him. Where is the Lizard King? Where is his palace? The big monkey gestured over in a direction. Afterwards, I went off that way. You know, that monkey looked kind of familiar. Nah, yeah, it was probably nothing. On day 75 to 78, I journeyed along until I came to a river. Uh-oh, it's my old nemesis, water. The river was way too wide to try and jump, and I didn't want to risk falling in, so I decided to build a bridge. I was halfway finished when out of nowhere, who was to turn up but the scorpions again? You guys, I'll make you pay for what you have done. I readied my sword and prepared to attack. This is for Daddy Longlegs. I charged at the scorpions, and they leaped forward to attack me. They were strong, and I could tell they were trying to push me back into the water. But with my new armor, I could hold them off. I'll take you all on if I need to. Then I remembered I had the potion and quickly used it against the scorpions. Take this! The scorpions began to move slower, and I could see their attacks before they could make them. Block, stab, slice, gone! One by one, I took out each of the scorpions. I gathered a new item. Scorpion tail, used to attack or intimidate enemies. Also, it can be used as a disguise. When all that was over, I continued making my bridge to get across the river. On day 79 to 85, I finally finished my bridge to cross the river. When I got to the other side, I found that the only way ahead was through a narrow ravine, but the entrance was guarded by two scorpions. Man, these guys are everywhere! While I could have attacked them, I remembered that I still had that scorpion tail in my belongings. I quickly put it on and approached them. La 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 la, just a disgusting scorpion out for a stroll. The guards didn't seem to mind and proceeded to let me through. Well, that was easy. While journeying, I wandered into an open field that looked pretty desert-like. Well, this is a weird place to put a desert. All of a sudden, I heard rumbling and could feel the ground shake. I knew right then what it was. Suddenly, the centipede bursted out of the ground, just like last time, and lunged toward me. It was time to take my revenge. Bring it on, leggy. That centipede was still fast and dangerous, but I was much more confident this time around. Oh, no, you don't. I even used the scorpion tail to make a couple of hits, but it broke in the middle of the fight. So much for disguising myself again in the future. Take that and that. 
Finally, I took out the potion again and used it for the finishing blows. I'm worthy enough this time. Prepare to be defeated. The potion worked, but the centipede was still quick. Furiously, I used everything I could to finally defeat it. Just then, I started feeling tingly. Ooh, I like this. I changed into a bigger and more powerful fire spider with even more hearts. All right now, Lizard King, prepare to meet your match. On days 86 to 90, I continued on my journey. I was feeling really confident until I realized I had just walked straight into quicksand. Oh, come on, who thinks of quicksand? Suddenly, I started thinking of ways to get out. All of a sudden, I could see Percy flying overhead. Percy, I'm glad you're here. I can see that. How can I help? Maybe you can pull me out, catch this chain and start flying. Good idea. Hit me. I threw the line towards Percy and began flying, pulling me out of the quicksand. Oh, that was close. Thanks, Percy. What are you doing here? I wanted to see how you were. You saved my life so many times before, and I guess I just wanted to repay you in some way. Well, you definitely did that. If it wasn't for you, I would be in a really sticky situation. It can get risky at times, wandering around out here on my own. You are definitely welcome, my friend. I will let the others know of your progress. Just before he left, Percy warned me about something he saw while flying overhead. Be careful. I saw what appeared to be a gang of bullfrogs coming in your direction. They must be heading to the palace of the Lizard King. Bullfrogs, you say? Those things will gobble spiders up in one bite. I'll be sure to look out for them. Thanks again, Percy. Take care. On days 91 to 94, I finally ran into the bullfrogs. Wow, those guys are big. I didn't know bullfrogs could get that big. For the most part, they didn't seem to notice me. That's until one of them apparently spotted me and started shooting his tongue at me. Yuck, I don't need you tasting me. He was strong though. He even took out a couple of my hearts. If I didn't make a move, I was going to be one toasted bug. I can't just keep fighting this guy forever. I knew I had to outmaneuver him, so I jumped into a tree and waited for him to get bored. Luckily, he didn't seem to be the smartest of creatures, even though he was so tough. Serves you right. I didn't come this far to become a spider snack. On days 95 to 97, I followed the bullfrogs to the Lizard King's palace. They might have been strong, but they weren't very smart. They led me right to where I needed to go. Wow, this is gonna be a lot. As I got closer to the gate, I spotted a message written on the palace roof. Subscribe! Oh yeah, that reminds me. Be sure to subscribe and like this video for more content. I go on a lot of adventures and would love to have you follow me on them. I tried to get through the front gate when a horde of gecko soldiers started to attack. Out of my way. I got a king to fight. I smacked the heck out of them until finally they were all defeated. This guy really loved his amphibians. On day 98, I ran inside through the palace corridors to find the Lizard King. Wow, this place is pretty ornate for a lizard. Hey, that armor looks kind of familiar. Huh? Oh yeah, I almost forgot that I had an adventure as a knight. That was a journey. You guys should definitely go check it out when you are done with this one. Through different rooms, I would occasionally have to battle some of the gecko soldiers. Don't you guys have anything better to do? Despite looking all throughout the palace, I couldn't seem to find the Lizard King anywhere. I was getting disappointed and even losing a little bit of hope. I turned around and I could see what appeared to be the ghost of a long-legged spider. Daddy Longlegs? Is that you? Yes, Zozo, it is I. I told you that I would always be there to help you. Don't give up. You are so close to the end. You're right, Daddy Longlegs. I must continue. I'm scared, though. I'm just a fire spider, and I don't know if I'll defeat the Lizard King. You may be small, but you have the spirit of a giant spider inside of you. And it's time to let that spirit out. I'm going to grant you the power that made me so big. Something started to happen. Magic energy filled the room, and I felt myself changing once again. I transformed into a gigantic fire spider. I had so many hearts now. Thanks, Daddy Longlegs. On day 99, I finally landed in the throne room. The Lizard King sat on his throne with his big red eyes staring at me. Well, well, if it isn't the itsy bitsy fire spider who defeated my minions. Looks like you aren't so small now, but I bet you're still weak. Come to face me at last? I will do what I must. Then you will croak. Just then, he flipped a lever, and the bullfrogs I had seen earlier came in. Oh no, not these guys again. Then I remembered I still had the potion, and was about to use it when one of the frogs grabbed it with its tongue. Guess I'm gonna have to do this the old-fashioned way. Using my wall-crawling abilities and spider jumps, I dodged attacks from the frogs and gave them some damage. It looked like my attacks were super-powered with fire strength now. Soon, all the frogs were defeated, though I could swear I missed one. Now it's just you and me, Lizard King. So be it. He charged toward me with lightning-fast speed, giving me strong blows that did cause some damage. You should not have fought against me, Spider. I am the Lizard King. Oh yeah? And how do you taste? What? Just then, the last frog I thought I missed shot his tongue out, grabbed the Lizard King by the tail, and sucked him into his mouth. 
No! I became hesitant because I didn't know how the frog was going to respond. Hey, you're that frog I fought with earlier. I'm sorry for hurting you. Truce? The frog just looked at me, then suddenly spat up the Lizard King's crown. He croaked, then proceeded to hop away. Well, I guess that means truce. On day 100, I returned to the base to see everyone there, waiting for me. I told them all about what happened with the Lizard King. Wow, I didn't even know frogs could eat lizards. Neither did I. Guess he learned something new every day. Zozo, I'm glad you've returned. Yeah, dude. The Lizard King is defeated. Now we're free. This would not have been possible without you, Zozo. Thank you, from all of us. Now we can go back to living our lives in peace. And now we have a new home for spiders of all walks of life. Then there came a commotion at the gate. Huh? What's going on over there? Suddenly, a loud croak could be heard. Frog! No, wait, I think I know him. Turns out, it was the frog from earlier. Come by to say hello. I'm glad you could come by. Just one rule, no eating anybody. The frog agreed and I proceeded to introduce him to everyone. This had been quite the adventure. On day one, I spawned into the stony peaks as an awesome elemental spider! Ten hearts, that isn't too bad. Still, I could probably afford to be a lot stronger. I started to crawl around on my eight elemental legs. It was in the middle of the night, with the moon shining up above. I couldn't help but feel like something spooky was about to happen. And then, in the cold of the moonlight, a huge scary werewolf jumped out. Ah, uh, hello there, little one. You look lost. Come with me. I can help you find your way. My, my, Mr. Werewolf. What big teeth you have. Yes, little spider. All the better to eat you with. He came charging towards me, and in a panic, I used one of my inherent spider powers, putting down as many cobwebs as I could. Lucky for me, the web slowed the werewolf down, buying me some time. <sighs> That's a dirty trick. Come back here. No way. I ran away as fast as I could, crawling through the stony peaks and trying to escape. But during my daring escape, I was ambushed by some vicious worgens. Not so fast, Spida. We want to play. But I didn't want to play, so I did all I could to escape and find a place to hide for the night. I waited for hours for morning to come, but it never did. The night just went on and on. Something's really wrong here. On day two, or at least after time for a whole day had passed, I noticed that the eternal night had continued and a big bright moon still hung up in the sky. This is so weird. Why isn't it ever daytime around here? It just doesn't make sense. But I couldn't afford to sit around and hide. My elemental spider stomach was grumbling. I started skittering around and searching for something to eat until I happened upon an apple tree full of rich, juicy apples. Ooh, don't mind if I do. I climbed the tree to get the apples, ate them, and then gathered some wood to make a wooden pickaxe. I mined some stone with it and used that stone to make a stone pickaxe and stone sword. If I'm gonna be trapped in a nightmarish eternal night, I might as well at least have a roof over my head. I mined enough stone from the stony peaks to start building myself a basic little spider nest. One room, a bed, and a few lanterns to offset the scary darkness. Be it ever so spooky, there's no place like home. And while I was admiring my work, I got interrupted by another worgen running in to attack me. Mmm, tasty spider. I'll eat you alive. Eat this instead. I lashed out with my sword, striking brave and true until the worgen was defeated. In that moment, I knew that I could stand up for myself. On day three, I left my base in the stony peaks to hang around the sunflower plains. It was still in the middle of the deep, dark night. Maybe I can find some interesting materials for my gear or my base around here. Instead, I felt a sudden cold gust of air blowing across the plains. A terrifying presence had entered the space. I looked up and saw a big, frightening Solnir galloping towards me. You should not be here, little spider. This is a dark and terrible place. If you're not careful, you could get hurt. I knew he wasn't warning me, he was threatening me. And he looked way too tough for me to take him on, so all I could do was run. I fled across the plains as fast as I could, with the Solnir hot on my heels. He was catching up to me. All I could do was use my special move, dropping more cobwebs to slow him down. You can't keep running forever, Zozo. I'll get you eventually. I was able to get out of there while the Solnir was trapped. I felt bad about running away. I need to stick to my guns and stand up for myself, or I'm never gonna solve this problem. Out of my way, fool. I looked down and saw a strange little creature standing at my feet. Who are you? 
Who am I? I'm the Onion Queen, you knave, and you would bow before me. My castle was destroyed in a worgen attack, and now I need to seek out a new castle. Well, your highness, why not come and stay at my base? I'd appreciate the company. This is agreeable, but only if my room is extremely elegant. From day four to day five, I return to my base in the Stony Peaks with her highness, the Onion Queen. This place is a horrible dump, Zozo. Not at all befitting of my regal nature, but it will have to do. Thanks for compromising for me, your highness. I guess. I set to work mining more stone until soon I'd excavated enough to make a new room where the Onion Queen could stay. I did my best to make it an elegant royal suite, but my resources were pretty limited at this stage. Hmm, I won't lie to you, Zozo. It's utterly hideous, but it will have to do. Thank you for the effort you put in. I left the base again to mine some more stone, but while I was out there, I was attacked by another gang of worgens. You guys just won't give up, will you? It's nighttime all the time out here. Don't your worgens ever sleep? They didn't reply. Instead, they ran in and attacked me, and I fought them back with my stone sword. When I'd finally defeated the nasty little gang, I noticed that one of them had dropped an interesting piece of loot. Wait, is that a battle axe? Don't they freeze any mobs I hit for 10 seconds? That'd be super useful later. From day six to day eight, I was back in the Stony Peaks looking for a decent mining cavern where I could upgrade all my weapons and tools. Some iron would change everything, but it's so hard to hunt some down when it's so dark all the time. Can't find your iron, eh? How about I help you out with an iron fist? I turned with terror and saw the giant werewolf standing right in front of me. He somehow looked even bigger and scarier now. You nasty little trickster. I bet you thought you were real smart using that trick with the spider webs. But with these new weapons, I won't even need to run to get you. That's when I noticed that the werewolf was carrying a stack of javelins. If he was good with them, I was in real trouble. Let's just talk, wolf to spider. I want some answers, werewolf. Can't you tell me why it's so dark all the time? You do this? I don't owe you any answers. All I owe you is a javelin to the face. Get running, Spider-Man. I started running away as the werewolf chased, throwing his javelins at me as I tried to flee. I managed to dodge most of them, but when one of them hit me, I lost most of my hearts. Oh no, oh no, 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 no! I knew if I took another javelin, I'd be doomed. I needed to make a plan, quickly. Wait, I've got it! I used my cobweb power again, building a wall of them. It wouldn't keep him back for long, but it might at least block some of his javelins. I've never been happier to be a web slinger. With the little time that bought me, I'd managed to escape the wrath of the werewolf yet again. From day nine to day 10, I was resting in my base, still recovering from that stressful attack by the werewolf. Boy, when the sun doesn't come out, it feels like there's no motivation to get up and get going. But I didn't just get to laze around all day. Instead, the Onion Queen suddenly burst into my room. Zozo, get up this instant. Your queen demands it. You're never going to get anything done if you can't even get out of bed. Sorry, sorry, your majesty. I didn't mean to upset you. I've taken the liberty of improving your base to make it live up to my own royal standards. Go check outside. I've begun work on constructing a great statue to inspire you into action for my honor. I went outside and saw that the Onion Queen had been true to her word. She'd started building an amazing statue for me, but I couldn't tell what it was just yet. What about you? What do you guys think? Do you know what the Onion Queen statue is gonna be? Let me know down in the comments. The Onion Queen wasn't done. She'd also made several other base upgrades, a training room where I could work hard and get stronger, and even a furnace to smelt metal ores and diamonds with a storage room where we could keep all of our supplies. You've outdone yourself with all this, your majesty. What can I say? I've always had a knack for architecture. It runs in the royal bloodline. From day 11 to day 12, I was lying in bed in a state of uneasy sleep. The fact that night and day were no longer different made it really difficult to decide when I should go to bed. While I was sleeping, I dreamed of daylight on the stony peaks. I dreamed of the bright sun up in the air. And strangely, I dreamed of a lone villager walking through the peaks. The villager wasn't strong and nobody took him seriously. What most people didn't know was that he had a powerful secret. Every full moon, he'd turn into a powerful werewolf. A werewolf that everyone fears and respects. But the problem was that the villager could only access this power under the full moon. He wanted to be a werewolf all the time, so he sought out an ancient and powerful spellbook. With the spellbook, he ushered in an eternal night 
and an eternal full moon. That way, he could always be the werewolf and always be the most powerful person out there. I woke up in a cold, elemental spider sweat. I knew everything now, and I knew that if I wanted the sun to rise again, I needed to defeat the werewolf once and for all. From day 13 to day 15, now knowing what I needed to do, I realized that I needed to get stronger if I wanted to defeat the werewolf and return sunlight to the overworld. If I'm going to be strong, I need to not be afraid. I need to take on even the most challenging enemies. That's why I returned to the Sunflower Plains that the sun hadn't touched in a long, long time to take on the Solnir. So, you return to me, little spider. Are you ready to leave this cold, dark world? No, Solnir. I'm just getting started. Come at me. And he did. The Solnir galloped in, but he didn't know that I had my battle axe ready. With one strike, he was frozen in place, and I pulled out my stone sword to finish him off. With the Solnir destroyed, I had enough XP to level up and get stronger. I had 30 hearts and my first elemental power, Ice Blast. This is awesome. This new power will catch that evil werewolf by surprise. From day 16 to day 19, with my new power and confidence, I knew that I needed to get myself some new equipment too. After all that searching around the stony peaks, I finally found a mining cavern that looked like it might have a rich vein of iron inside. Time to get mining. I descended into the mining cavern until I found the iron I was looking for. After hacking through the blocks with my stone pickaxe, I collected up the iron ore and started to leave. But on the way out, I was cornered by a big, scary hellhound. Ah. Uh, Nice, doggy. Lucky for me, I had my new power. I blasted the hellhound with my ice blast, freezing it in place. I didn't want to hurt him, so I just snuck out as quickly as I could while he was still frozen. Not long after, I made it back to my base, where I used the furnace that the Onion Queen built me to smelt the iron into ingots and made myself some new tools, an iron pickaxe and an iron sword. Nothing's gonna stop me now. From day 20 to day 22, I got another rude awakening from the Onion Queen. Okay, okay, I'll get up. Just give me five more minutes, your majesty. No time, Zozo. That ghastly werewolf. He's here at the future Onion Queen Palace. What? Oh, no. With no time to waste, I skittered out of my room on my eight elemental legs and met the terrifying werewolf standing right there. You, little spider, are one of the biggest cowards I've ever met. Every time we battle, you use your little cobwebs to escape. So now, I've come to you. No way out. Are you ready to meet your doom, spider boy? My name is Zozo, and this time, I'm ready to take you on, one on one. The battle began, using my iron sword and my battle axe against him. He was incredibly strong and equally fast, but I didn't give up. And when I hit him with an ice blast, he stopped dead. What is this magic? You couldn't do that before. Because I'm getting stronger, werewolf. And soon, I'll be so strong that you can't defeat me. Don't count your elemental spider eggs before they hatch, Zozo. I will return. With that, the werewolf ran off into the eternal night. And for the first time, I truly believed that I could defeat him once and for all. From day 23 to day 26, I was, once again, woken up after my intense battle by the Onion Queen. How many times, Zozo? Ah, sorry, fighting the werewolf was tiring work. Well, you won't last very long as my royal protectorate if you get hit by one of his javelins, will you? Here, while you were sleeping, I made these. The Onion Queen handed me a pair of Outback leggings. He should make you more agile and allow you to dodge out of the path of oncoming projectiles. Plus, you need a uniform if you're going to represent my royal name out there. Huh, these are a pretty good fit. Not sure they're my color, though. You'd better wear them, Zozo. As royalty, I have demanded it. And that means what I say is now law. Any more laws you want to decree, your highness? Yes, actually. I hereby declare that everyone should search Z-O-Z-O -Z to find more videos to watch. I had no idea what any of that meant, but it sounded important, so I'd do it if I were you. From day 27 to day 31, the Onion Queen seemed pretty agitated about something, and not wanting to get on her bad side, I figured I should ask her. Everything going okay, your highness? No, not at all. Everything is positively horrid. Positively? Isn't that good? No! Look at, just look at my statue! I took a look, and the Onion Queen had really been making a lot of progress with building her new monument. It looks okay to me. Uh, 
Uh, of course you'd think that. To the untrained eye, maybe. But there's no white concrete. How can I possibly have a statue celebrating my regality without any white concrete? Uh, okay. Well, what if I go and find some white concrete that you can use to add to the statue? Well, it's about time you made yourself useful. Off you go. There should be some in the Twilight Valley. So, off I went to search the Twilight Valley. It didn't take me long to find some white concrete, which made me wonder what all the fuss was about. Then, I noticed a gang of worgens in my way. That explains that, I guess. I leapt into action and delivered a few battle axe attacks to freeze the worgens in place, then shattered them to frozen pieces with my sword. With all of them defeated, I was able to retrieve plenty of white concrete and returned it to the Onion Queen to add to her vanity project. I mean, statue. This will do for now, but you'd better head back to the Twilight Valley to get more! Your queen demands it! From day 32 to day 35, I did as the Onion Queen asked me, or rather, told me, and went off to find more white concrete in the Twilight Valley. I didn't come across much more though, just a few extra wargans to take out for the XP. Suddenly, I heard a call for help from nearby. Uh, excuse me, I could use some help here if it's no trouble that is. Sure thing, at least you're polite about it. I'm Zozo. What do you need? Oh, thank you. Uh, well, I'm little Kato, and well, my friend hasn't come back for a while. I'm worried he might have been kidnapped. That's awful. Don't worry, Kato. I'll do my best to track him down. You just point me towards where you last saw him. From day 36 to day 39, I followed little Kato's directions until I came across a mini base hidden in the Twilight Valley and made my way through the main entrance without any problems. Sure enough, there was Kato's friend being held inside a cage although I hadn't expected him to be a tomato. Um, excuse me, are you Kato's friend? Oh my, thank heavens, did she send you? She did, although she didn't mention you were- Oh, I know, imagine putting someone in a cage, it's barbaric. I'm rolling the rogue tomato. I'd ask your name, but we'll have to dispense with the pleasantries until you've got me out of here. Quickly, before he gets back, he's been threatening to chop me up and put me in a salad. It's ghastly. Sure, I'll get on it. Who captured you anyway? That'd be me. What do you think you're doing with my lunch? I turned around to find myself face to face with a terrifying Reaver. He seemed pretty mad to find me trying to rescue Roland, so I acted fast. I used my webs to create a defensive barrier around the rogue tomato's cage, then got ready to fend off the deadly Reaver. From day 40 to day 43, I battled with the Reaver. It was way bigger than me and a tough opponent, but I had to do my best to save Roland and reunite him with Kato. The Reaver was vicious, but also found it hard to move inside the cramped space of the mini base. So I used that to my advantage. I webbed him to the spot. Then, as he was struggling to free himself, I used a well-timed ice blast to freeze him solid. With him trapped, I went in for the killing blow with my sword and defeated the Reaver. Yeah, I did it. What a show. Good hustle there, mystery rescuer. Now, if you're not too tired, mind getting back to freeing me from this cage? Okay, okay, here you go. And just like that, Roland the Rogue Tomato was saved. Since it was still a dark and endless night outside, I figured the right thing to do was guide him back to where Kato was, just in case any other nasty mobs decided they fancied a tomato for a snack. Thank you, Zozo. I dread to think what would have happened if you didn't come along. No problem. You know, I take back what I said before. You guys are actually quite the pair of friends. Here, Kato, why don't we give this charming elemental spider the rest of our white concrete? It's the least we can do to say thank you. From day 44 to day 49, I left little Kato and Roland the Rogue Tomato to go off together and headed back from the Twilight Valley to my base back in the Stony Peaks. It had been a hard few days, at least it felt that way. Thanks to no daytime or nighttime, it was hard to tell exactly how long it had been. Although, it seemed to be long enough for the Onion Queen to have more complaints. There you are! You've been off gallivanting for ages! You really expect me to finish the work on this statue by myself? It's manual labor, unbecoming of royalty. Don't you know it's illegal for me to work since I'm the queen? Is it illegal or is it just illegal because you said it is? Don't speak like that to me. That's almost treasonous. Did you at least find some more white concrete? Oh, well, I kind of got sidetracked, but I did manage to get some. Well, good. Here, you can use that and the rest of mine to carry on working on the statue. I'm going to go lie down. Remember to make it look stoic, but also down to earth, like me. 
I decided I'd work on the statue later. In the meantime, I went about building a perimeter wall to give my base some added defenses. I got the idea after seeing that Reaver's mini base. Plus, it'd come in handy in case the werewolf came back while I wasn't around. I thought I told you to finish the statue. That was a really quick nap, your highness. I can't sleep for too long. I don't want to look like a disheveled commoner. Uh, anyway, while you've been so preoccupied with less important things, I took it upon myself to work more on my resplendent statue. Well, that's really something. I just hope no mobs spot it from a distance and decide to come pay us a visit. Well, that's for you to handle. I'm queen. I shouldn't have to fight. From day 50 to day 53, I was recuperating at my base when suddenly a javelin came flying towards me. Thanks to my outback leggings, I was able to hop right out of the way without injury as it hurtled past and missed me. It was the werewolf who had thrown it. He had come back to the base, this time with an army of his vile worgens. Did you think I was done with you? Oh no, now here comes the wolf to flush the spider out. Worgens, attack! The worgens charged at the base, clambering their way over the perimeter wall. I launched a few ice blasts from inside, trying to freeze them as they got closer. The werewolf stormed the base and kidnapped the Onion Queen. I was still fighting off the worgens inside the base when the werewolf escaped with the Onion Queen. The one upside was I was fighting his minions off a lot easier now and cut through enough of them to level up. I now had a whopping 50 hearts. And even better, watching the worgens invade my base had helped teach me a new elemental spider ability. Now I could climb walls. From day 54 to day 57, I decided to work on repairing the base and fixing some of the damage left behind by those pesky worgens. Even I had to admit, the place felt too quiet without the Onion Queen. Sure, she was pretty bossy, but I suppose she couldn't help it. She was used to having servants and people to do whatever she wanted all the time. I knew that that werewolf wouldn't harm her until he got me, so I still had time to mount a rescue. With the repairs all done, I decided to head back to the Twilight Valley and reach out to my other friends. Little Kato was happy to see me. Oh, I'm real sorry about what happened at your base, Sozo. Thanks, Kato. I don't suppose you saw what direction the werewolf took the Onion Queen in? I would have gone back to the Zelkova Forest. That's where the werewolf's lair is. But you really don't look like you're ready to take on that nasty wolf just yet. What do you think I should do next then? Maybe go and uh, make yourself some new equipment first. I mean, only if you want to. I know there's a cave near here with lots of shiny stones in it. Maybe start there. Shiny stones? You mean diamonds? Now that sounds like a good idea. Thanks, Kato. From day 58 to day 62, I took little Kato's advice and headed off to mine for some diamonds. My trusty iron sword and pickaxe had served me well up until now. But if I was going to stand a chance at defeating the werewolf and restoring daylight and save the Onion Queen on top of that, then I'd need some much stronger gear. Venturing deeper into the mining cavern, I quickly spotted the glint of some shiny diamonds and wasted no time prying them out of the cave stone walls. Just as I gathered up my newfound diamonds, it seemed that something was stirring underground. A dangerous High Reaver appeared, and I climbed up a nearby wall just in time to dodge his attack. I leapt down from my vantage point and gave my old iron sword one last use to take down the High Reaver. Once that was done, I used my newly mined diamonds to make myself some shiny new gear. I had enough to forge a diamond sword and a matching pickaxe to make fighting and gathering resources much easier. I was a step closer to restoring daylight in the overworld. From day 63 to day 66, I made my way back to my base. Even though I had come a long way, I was still feeling uncertain. I knew that if what Kato had said was true, then I was still underprepared to face the werewolf again. In the endless nighttime he had created, he would be far more powerful, and it seemed no amount of new diamond weapons could change that. But as I returned home, I was greeted by the sight of the Onion Queen statue. It stood, unfinished, and part of me thought it would be right to finish it, but I changed my mind. No, she should be here to see it completed. Although she bossed me around, we were still friends, and I had to get her back. After all, I was meant to be her protector, right? So I readied myself for the next part of my quest, to find the werewolf's den, defeat him, save the Onion Queen, and finally bring an end to the night. And if you want to help me get there, then why don't you subscribe by clicking the button below. And make sure to leave a like on the video and comment to show your support. From day 67 to day 70, I headed towards the creepy Zelkova Forest. If Kato was right, this was where I'd find the werewolf's hideout. My plan was to do what I had done when I went to rescue Roland, find some way to get inside and find where my friendly Onion Queen was being held. 
Then, if I could manage it, I would break her out and get her back to safety and worry about settling the score with the werewolf later. As I approached the fortress, a pretty nasty welcome party was patrolling the area nearby. Worgens! I blasted three with an ice blast, holding them in place while my new diamond sword took down the others in one hit each. Then, before the frozen worgens had a chance to defrost, I slashed the blade their way and shattered them. I figured out quickly that there must have been so many of them here guarding away into the werewolf's den. And sure enough, after I looked around, I found a button that opened up the entrance into a tunnel. This was my way in. From day 71 to day 74, I traveled through the long, dark hallway into the fortress. In fact, since there was torches on the wall, the dark down here wasn't so bad. It was actually easier to see my way around than outside in the endless night. I made my way into the werewolf's base and began searching around. I managed to stay hidden in the werewolf's den, mainly by climbing up the walls and avoiding the eyeline of the wargans that were patrolling the fortress's corridors. However, in the first room I searched, I stumbled across a Solnir. How did you get in, intruder? I came in through dirt tunnel. <laughs> Just for that joke, I'm trampling you myself instead of bringing you to the werewolf. <laughs> Good luck doing that. Well, web to the floor. I used my webs and stuck them to the spot, then climbed up the wall, putting all my elemental spider skills on display. I leapt down, sword at the ready, and swiped at the Solnir. Like that, he was down. But then I realized what he was guarding in this room. In the far corner was an old chest, and once I pried it open, I found something that would give me even more of an edge. It was a full set of diamond armor. I quickly put it on to protect myself from oncoming damage. From day 75 to day 78, I continued to look around for the Onion Queen. After searching high and low, I eventually found where the Onion Queen was being held. So, so, I never thought I'd see you again. Please get me out of here! Compared to this awful cage, your base is a palace! It's okay, your highness. That's why I came here. You mean, even after I've been so rude to you, you still came to rescue me? Sure. That's what friends do. Friends? What are those? Is that another word for uh, servants? I'll explain later. <laughs> With a few swings of my sword, I broke the cage wide open and the Onion Queen was free! She ran off, and before I could join her, a certain sinister someone jumped out in front of me. Not so fast. You thought it would be that easy? I knew you'd come and get the queen. In fact, I was counting on it. Now you've saved me the trouble of bringing you here myself. The werewolf! It was a trap! I leapt into battle and swiped at him with my sword, catching him by surprise with a flurry of attacks. He was still too tough for me to fully defeat, but I had to try. With a few more well-timed hits, I was able to weaken the wolf enough for me to flee and head back out through the tunnel to safety. From day 79 to day 84, although I was heading back to base, the werewolf wasn't taking our escape well. Ugh, that pesky elemental spider thinks he can scuttle into my home and steal from my larder, not on my watch. The werewolf went to find the book of spells he owned, the same one he had used as a villager to stop the sun from rising and keep the overworld trapped in endless nighttime. Aha, uh -huh. here's the incantation. He began casting another magic spell. Outside in the sky, the glow of the moonlight got brighter. He grew into an even bigger, scarier werewolf than he was before. Yes. Yes! With more moonlight, my strength will increase! And there won't be anything that Zozo can do to stop me! No elemental spider can stop the power of the moon! From day 85 to day 89, I finally made it back to the stony peaks in one piece with the Onion Queen behind me. I think I've nearly got it. So friends are other people who you... Um, what do you do with them again? You can talk to them, hang out and share interests. If you're in trouble and can't get yourself out, then you can call on a friend to help. Some friends even give each other gifts. Are we friends, Zozo? Sure, I mean, as long as you want to be. I would like that. Here, have this. I was taught this spell when I took the throne, but I have no way to harness it. 
I'm not attuned with the elements, but you're an elemental spider. The Onion Queen cast her magic my way and gave me a new upgrade, a fire aspect enchantment. Just give me a moment, Zozo. I should go and do something. After a little while, I figured out that the Onion Queen had wanted to finish her statue. And pretty soon, she told me it was finished. But what I hadn't been expecting was for her to make it into a giant spider web. I felt really appreciated. There's something you should know. When I was captured, the werewolf spoke of a book of spells he has and how he can increase his power with the moonlight. If you get that book, you might be able to bring daylight back. But with the moon this bright, you need to be stronger. Well, I've been trying my best. Maybe since he's using magic, I should use some of my own to stop him. I agree. I think it's time for me to stop clinging to my royal title and do something that can actually change things for the better. I'm going to help you. From day 90 to day 94, I set out toward the old mini base in the Twilight Valley. The Onion Queen had sent me there to see if there was any magical supplies we could steal from the werewolf's minions. I ran into another group of worgens, and they went down after a short fight. I was really getting good at this, and with my new fire aspect enchantment, it was easier than ever to take these nasty critters down. Their boss would be another story, though. I searched around the mini base and found another chest. Perfect, I wonder what's inside. I opened it up and was delighted to find a potion of power. This would be perfect to give me a boost of strength to help me take down the werewolf. I'd still need some more help in order to beat him. And that's when I remembered what I taught the Onion Queen. From day 95 to day 97, I went back to my base. And to my luck, the exact person I was hoping to see was right there waiting for me. Zozo, you're back. Hey there, Kato. How's Roland doing? He's fine. Well, not exactly. He got it in his head that the werewolf wants to eat him. Well, let's see what we can do about stopping that from happening. I actually came here to give you a gift. It's not much, but I wanted to say thank you for saving my rogue tomato friend and trying your best against the werewolf. Oh, you didn't have to get me a gift? Actually, where is it? Oh, it's in my brain. I'm going to show you how to make netherite armor. It'll be strong enough that the werewolf will never bite through. So for the next few days, Kato and I worked on building my new armor. And sure enough, by the time we were done, I had the toughest, most pristine full set of netherite armor anyone had ever seen. On day 98, I was preparing myself for the final battle. This was it. After nearly a full 100 days of night, I was getting ready to face off against the werewolf for the third and final time. I had my potion of power ready to drink, and I was decked out in my sweet new netherite armor. There was only one thing left to do. Search for more videos by typing ZOZO -Z and leave me a comment telling us what you want to see us survive 100 days in Minecraft next. Okay, two things left to do. I said farewell to my friends, leaving the Onion Queen and little Kato in the safety of my base as I set off to complete my quest. On day 99, I decided not to take the secret tunnel into the werewolf's den. I had gone that way last time, and no doubt he'd have that entrance guarded this time around. So instead, I snuck up to the outer walls and used my elemental spider ability of crawling to climb up the wall and find a way in through the top. Once I was inside, I decided it was time to get ready for the fight. I already had on my netherite armor for protection and my diamond sword to do some damage. But the werewolf had the power of being a wolf and the moon on his side. So I drank my potion of power and leveled up. The potion made me even stronger. I now had 100 hearts and the power to fire energy blasts. Now this would be a fair fight. And not a moment too soon because the werewolf came barreling down the halls of his fortress towards me. I could smell you a mile off. You've been a thorn in my side for too long, Zozo. Now it's time to squash this itsy bitsy elemental spider. We clashed and I used my sword to block the swings of his claws. He was ferocious, far more than he had been before. He might have spent too much time in the, well, the moon. Wait, is moonstroke a thing? You can get sunstroke if you're out in the sun for too long, so maybe? Do you ever stop talking? While the werewolf was agitated and distracted, I surprised him with a sudden energy blast. It sent him staggering backwards. I ran at him with my diamond sword drawn. We clashed swords again. He really was stronger, but so was I. I ducked out of the path of his claws and used all my tricks against him. He froze him to the spot and swung my sword before he quickly broke free from the ice. I leapt out of the path of his javelins and climbed up the walls to get out of his reach when I needed a second to collect my thoughts. 
And then, leaping from above, I brought my sword swinging down through the air! Boom! I had done it! I defeated the werewolf! On day 100, I gathered up the spellbook from the werewolf's lair and made my way back to the base with a spring in my step. Both little Kato and the Onion Queen cheered when they saw me making it back in one piece. You did it, Zozo. I never doubted you for a second. Thanks, Kato. I think you might know what to do with this spell book. No, the honor is all yours, Zozo. I'll be happy to once again feel the sunlight with friends by my side. I flipped through the pages and found the right spell. And once I recited the magic words, the sky was filled with bright sunlight. Daytime had been restored and the overworld was back to normal. All thanks to your friendly neighborhood, Elemental Spider. On day one, I spawned in the Sika Woods as an Ice Spider-Man! This is awesome! I didn't think the world's greatest web-slinger could get any cooler, but hey, here I am! Things weren't all peachy, though. For starters, I only had 10 hearts. And for seconds, a giant buff pigless came barging through the trees towards me. Spider-Man, I found you! Wait, what? I don't understand! Don't play dumb with me, Spider-Man. I'm Pigless Polly, the biggest, meanest, smartest, and also most beautiful Pigless in all the land. And you've been trying to mess with my plants for years. Don't think that turning your suit blue would confuse me. I'm a genius. But I'm just Zozo playing, Spider-Man. There's been some kind of mistake. You will confound me not, puny spider. You better run, or my bubble brawler boys will beat you into a spidery pulp. I could tell when I wasn't wanted, and this was one of those times. I turned and ran as quickly as I could. What did she mean about her bubble brawler boys? But life soon answered my question. A gang of bubble monsters emerged from the trees and started chasing me. Oh, there they are. Using my enhanced spider speed, I was able to escape and find a hiding place for the night. Always great to spawn into a world where someone already has a grudge against me. I need to figure this out before it's too late. On day two, when I got the sense that the coast was cleared, I spider climbed out of my hiding spot and started to explore the woods a little more casually. This place is actually pretty beautiful. Maybe I should work on building a home around here. That's when one of the bubble monsters jumped out in front of me. Oh, I'll build you a home, Spidey. Six feet under. You've got a lot of nerve showing your face around here. Lady Polly wants us to destroy you on sight. I still don't know what I did to upset your beast of a boss, but if you think this icy superhero won't be fighting back, you've just made your last mistake. We battled hand to hand. What the bubble monster didn't know was I had super spider strength, so my hits really packed a punch. After a few well-aimed strikes, I burst his bubble and moved on. Wow, beating that guy up really worked up an appetite. I need to find myself some nosh. Lucky for me, there were plenty of trees around. I collected the yummy pears from the leaves. Tasty! I knocked down the rest of the pear tree with my spider fists. With the spare wood, I made myself a wooden pickaxe. Then I dug into the ground and collected enough stone to assemble a stone pickaxe, stone axe, and a stone sword. I've got that caveman swag now. With my new stone axe, I gathered more wood and built myself a little spider base with a room for me to spend the night indoors. Ah, <sighs> nice and cozy. Things are gonna get better and better. On day three, I left my base and went out to explore the Jacaranda Forest. It was a gorgeous sight to see. Even if there aren't any useful resources around here, it's worth it for the view. But just because the view is breathtaking didn't mean that everyone who lived there was chill. Case in point, a big angry mutated bee ran over to me. What do you think you're doing here? Uh, I'm walking here? Are you making fun of me? No, I don't even know who you are. The name's Benson, Barry B. Benson. And I was just a normal bee until my human wife left me and I got turned into the super-powered mutant abomination. I... I don't see how that's my problem. Well, I gotta take it out on somebody, don't I? Barry B. Benson attacked me with furious intensity. And even with my spider strength, I couldn't defeat his divorced mutant rage. Instead, I ran away as he fumed loudly in the background. He sounded like he should chill out or maybe get into jazz. On my way out of the Jacaranda Forest, I ran into a sad-looking spider. Seeing as I myself was also a spider, I decided to go over and ask her if she was okay. Hey, I'm Zozo. Who are you? Is everything okay? I'm Spider Queen, and sadly, things aren't okay. Oh, wow. Spider Queen? Does that mean you're the queen of all spiders? 
No, I'm actually a one spider tribute act to the band Queen. They're my favorite. But Pigless hates Queen, and she won't let me perform anymore. That's horrible. Why not come back to my base? You can work on your act there. That's amazing, Zozo. I want it all. From day four to day five, I return to my little base in the Sika Woods with Spider Queen at my side. It's not much, but it's home. It looks amazing to me, Zozo. Musicians don't make much money, and I'm super impressed by this. Do you want me to sleep on the floor? What? No way! I'm gonna build you your own room! So that's exactly what I did! I gathered up enough wood to make Spider Queen her own special room, where she could jam out all she liked. Oh, Zozo, you're the best! I couldn't be happier! Take a second to hide in there. I think I can hear another bubble monster coming towards us! Spider Queen hid away inside the room I'd made for her as I went out to battle the bubble monster! Pigless sends her regards! We're gonna destroy you for her, one way or another, or she's gonna do it herself! She's gonna need to destroy me herself, because there's no way you're up to the task, Bubble Boy! With my new stone sword, the Bubble Monster didn't stand a chance! He was soon defeated, and I returned to Spider Queen. It's okay, the Bubble Monster is gone now, you're safe! We are the champions! Yay! Thank you for saving us, Zozo! Here, have one of my guitars! It plays music while you fight with it! Spider Queen gave me the guitar, and I immediately equipped it! Whoa, this is cool as heck! Oh yeah, we will rock you! On day six, I started the day with the wholesome act of sheep gathering, just in case I need the wool for a new spidey suit. I wandered into the woods, and after a long time, emerged from them, seeing a road. Whoa, where am I? I followed the road and soon found myself in a cul-de-sac with some really cool and colorful houses nearby. Is that a flying orange? At the base of the flying orange, I saw some sheep wandering around, just what I was looking for. I started to round up the sheep when an orange boy came bounding out of the orange at me. Get away from my sheep, you costume creep. Whoa, whoa, hang on a second. I didn't want to hurt him, but he wouldn't listen to me. Richie, what are you doing? Leave that guy alone. Yeah, Richie, he didn't know those were your sheep. Richie stopped chasing me as three more characters, one of which looked like a bear, came running over to me. Max, do you know who this guy is? He looks like he might be dangerous. Relax, Beast. I'm sure he's fine. Whoa, that suit is awesome. Did you invent that? I'm something of a scientist myself. You guys are being so rude. What's your name? I'm Sky. This is Beast, Max, and Richie. I'm Zozo, and yeah, this is my Spidey suit. One of the icy variety, anyway. What are you guys doing out here? But before they could answer, I saw the last person I wanted to see. It was Pigless. She had found me, and she was wielding a huge, terrifying mace. Like my new hardware, Spider-Man? This mace is one of the most powerful weapons out there. Perfect for squishing a nasty little bug like you. Whoa, who is the little piggy? Max, don't provoke her. Can't you see what she's holding? Hey, who do you think you are talking to our new friend like that? Oh, glad to know there's no hard feelings about the sheep. This is Pigless Polly. She kind of wants to destroy me. Enough jibber-jabber. I'll squash all of you then. Yeah, we'd like to see you try. We're not scared of you. Max threw down a mysterious item on the ground, and a bunch of armor appeared out of it. His friends suddenly put on armor that matched their colors, along with some matching swords. Eh, fine. No need to ruin a perfectly good neighborhood. But mark my words, Spidey. I'll find you again, and I'll be stronger than ever. Pigless Polly turned and ran, leaving me alone with Max and his friends. Whoa, guys, thanks for the help. I could use you guys back at my base. That sounds really fun, but I don't think we can make it. To answer your question from before about what we're doing here, I'm a YouTuber, and I document all the crazy adventures my friends and I go on. Yeah, if you've got some days to spare, you should hang out with us. You know, I could actually use a couple days to lay low after that encounter. Let's do it. From day seven to day eight, I, well, actually, you'll just have to click the link in the description to watch what I did on days seven and eight with Max and his friends. Our adventure is just in English though, but it was super fun. And if you watch, be sure to leave a comment on his video to let him know I sent you. From day 9 to day 10, I was on my way back to my base with some sheep as a gift from Richie. When I arrived, Spider Queen came running over to talk to me. I've been building, Zozo. Come, check it out. She'd been building a lot, in fact. One of the first things I'd seen was the statue she'd been working on to inspire me. I couldn't tell what it was yet, but I was very excited to find out. Do you have any ideas? Let me know down in the comments. 
And the statue wasn't all. She'd also been working on some new buildings and upgrades for the base itself, including a storage room for all of our gear, a training room for practicing our skills, and a furnace for smelting ore into ingots. I'm so glad to have you here, Spider Queen. And I'm grateful to have you here as a friend. You're the best friend I've ever had, Zozo. Last thing I did for the day was set up a basic sheet pen and went to bed. From day 11 to day 12, Spider Queen and I relaxed while she practiced her music. I've been wondering, why do you think Pigless Polly believes I'm her Spider-Man? How can there even be more than one Spider-Man? I've got a theory about that, actually. I think when you spawned, you created a dimensional rift that sent this universe's Spider-Man into your native dimension while bringing you here, like a big cross-dimensional swap. Whoa, that's wild! How can you know all this when you're just a one spider tribute pan? No offense, of course. I actually have a degree in transdimensional physics. It's more of a hobby thing, really. Being a queen tribute act is my real ambition. From day 13 to day 15, I return to the beautiful Jacaranda Forest with a plan in mind. Defeat that dastardly Barry B. Benson, the mutated bee. He's gotta be around here somewhere. I mean, he's so aggro. I imagine he'll come looking for me. And I was right. After a little more searching, Barry the mutated bee ran in and prepared to attack me. There you are. You've been due for a good thrashing, Zozo. I still haven't forgiven you for your trespasses against me earlier. I still don't fully understand what I did, but if we've got a fight, let's just get it over with and fight. Finally, you're making some sense. And so, our battle began. I battered him with my guitar until he submitted, but I decided against finishing him off because honestly, I felt sorry for him. Go talk to your ex-wife, Barry. You clearly have some pent-up anger issues and you're not gonna solve them by beating up random strangers. Yeah, you're right. Sorry for all the trouble, Zozo. And with that, he left. But my act of kindness and mercy gave me some XP to level up. Getting 30 hearts, getting bigger and stronger, and getting a web shooter, which I could use to shoot webs. About time. I wonder. Whoa! I can also ride the webs as they fly through the air. Awesome! At long last, some real Spider-Man powers. This is great! From day 16 to day 19, I decided that I couldn't battle every baddie with just a guitar, so I went down into the nearest mining cavern to find some iron ore. Spider-Man, Spider-Man wants his hands on some iron, man. And my catchy theme song worked, because I did manage to find a vein of iron ore and immediately started mining it. This seems like about enough to make the tools I want. Time to head back to my base. But on the way out of the mining cave, I saw a dangerous zombie spoiner standing in my way. Wait, this is a perfect opportunity to try out my new web shooter. I started throwing down cobwebs, trapping the zombie spoiler in place and slowing him down to a crawl. With him lodged in place, it was easy to finish him off with my rockin' guitar. Yeah, that power is gonna be really useful. After that, I went back to my base and smelted the ore in my furnace until I had just enough ingots to make a metal sword and a metal pickaxe, axe, and some boots. This has been an extremely successful excursion. From day 20 to day 22, I was having the most amazing dream when I was suddenly woken up by Spider Queen standing anxiously next to my bed. Zozo, I'm sorry to wake you up, but something really scary is happening. Oh no, what's that? I was playing Bohemian Rhapsody a little too loudly, and I think Pigless heard me. Long story short, she's standing outside. What? Now I think we need to fight her. It's too dangerous for you, Spider Queen. Stay in here. I'll go and face her alone. And that's exactly what I did. I got out of bed and ran out to battle Pigless, who was still wielding her terrifying mace. There you are, Spider-Man. Not so tough with all your colorful friends no longer around. It's time for you to meet your doom. I keep telling you, I'm not the Spider-Man you're looking for. I come from a different dimension. I'm the Ice Spider-Man. Well, even if you aren't my Spider-Man, I'll still settle for getting to destroy a Spider-Man. And you'll do just fine. If your mind's made up, then I guess we better fight. And we did, but this time I had a way better chance. I threw down some cobwebs immediately, trapping Pigless in place before pulling out my iron sword and going to town. In the end, she broke free from the cobwebs, but she seemed startled. You, you're stronger than I remember. Hmm, I don't have time for this. We'll battle again soon, and next time you won't be so lucky. She fled after that, leaving me feeling stronger and more confident than ever. If I keep getting stronger, I think I can finally take her. 
From day 23 to day 26, I spent some time at my base, calmly collecting myself and spinning together a new addition to my spider suit. I used the wool from the sheep I got from Richie and some emu feathers that were laying on the ground to weave some outback leggings. With these, I could move faster and dodge out of the way of projectiles. Now I've really got the agility of a spider. It wouldn't be perfect. There was only about a 45% chance I'd be able to avoid oncoming attacks, but it was the edge I would need in my next battle with Pigless. And if you think this adventure is getting wild, then you should search for more videos and see more of my Minecraft challenges. Just type ZO ZO into the search bar up above. From day 27 to day 31, while I was still hunkered down at the base in the Sika Woods, I noticed Spider Queen seemed to be struggling with her statue. What's wrong, Spider Queen? Zozo, I just feel so under pressure. It's pushing down on me. I want to get the statue finished, but I'm missing a very key component. Hey, it's okay. You've been doing great so far. Here, why don't I help you out? What's this component you need to add to your statue? I just need some redstone blocks. Say no more. I'll go and fetch some. Thank you, Zozo. I ventured off to track down large quantities of redstone, making my way towards the Twilight Valley. This place was a lot darker than the other areas I had visited. The shadows were the perfect cover for some bubble monsters to sneak up and ambush me. There he is. Get him. Piglas is ordered. Hey, hey, come on, guys. Surely there's a peaceful way around this. Piglas can't be paying you that much. It's not always about the money, Spider-Man. It's about the Mets, baby. Let's go. Get a home run. Jerry, quiet down. Sorry he gets a little excited about baseball. Oh, hey, where'd he go? Over here, bubble brain. I turned the shadows to my advantage and struck the bubble monsters in place with my cobweb attacks. They tried to swipe at me from the spots they were stuck to, but a few swinging smashes with my slamming six strings and their bubbles were burst. And just my luck, nearby there was a large deposit of redstone ore, so I gathered it up for Spider Queen. From day 32 to day 35, I continued patrolling around the Twilight Valley for any more signs of trouble, along with any more useful resources I could bring back. And while I was wandering around, I overheard the sound of distressed wailing. Help! Oh, won't someone help me? I'm far too important to need to ask for help. Uh, hey there, who are you? Oh, 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 <laughs> what a rather humorous joke. Quite amusing, yes, imagine not knowing who I am. My, you've cheered me up somewhat, small spidery peasant. Uh, I wasn't kidding. I don't know who you are. Don't know? How insulting. I am royalty. I am the King Pig, pig-headed head of the pig-headed monarchy. Oh, my bad. Are you needing help with something? Well, it's about time you offered. My benefactor, the rich mummy, has run afoul of a hairy troll. And since he provides me with a lion's share of his wealth, I'm distraught. He's not even written me into his will yet, so I won't get any of his gold if that troll smashes him. You, uh, want me to go save him? I am a superhero after all. Oh, a hero of the common folk. How quaint. Yes, yes, on you go, Spider-Boy. It's Spider-Man! Ice Spider-Man! From day 36 to day 39, I searched the Twilight Valley for any signs of this rich mummy, and eventually came across my first sign of where he might be, a troll's mini base. I watched from a distance, and it looked like the hairy troll was guarding the front entrance. If I tried to just walk up, he could smash me to spider smithereens. So I had to think up a strategy. How was I going to get in there? I'd need to take the troll out, but attacking head on was a bad idea. Sneaking around the back? Uh, it could work, but it might take too long, and the rich mummy might be doomed if the troll got hungry before I could reach him. Think, Zozo, think! You can do whatever a spider can. <gasps> oh, could I climb in? I tried on a nearby tree, but I couldn't stick to it. No climbing up walls for me, that stinks. I could ride my web shooter, but he will spot me immediately. That's not gonna work either. Maybe my best option was to look for another way in. From day 40 to day 43, I made my way around the outskirts of the troll's mini base, and lucky for me, there was a back entrance. Inside, I found the rich mummy trapped in a cage. Who might you be? Oh no, you're not with him, are you? Oh, Gusty, you must be his torturer. No, I'm Ice Spider-Man. I'm here to save you. Just keep it down. I need to clear the way ahead. Then I'll come back for you. I snuck through the base and spotted the hairy troll. He didn't see me coming, so I used the element of surprise while I had it. I spun my webs to catch him in place, but he was strong enough to tear himself free. It barely slowed him down. He swung his mace at me, and I was luckily able to dodge out of the way just in the nick of time thanks to my outback leggings. I retaliated by swinging my guitar at him, but the hairy troll had a high resistance to rock. 
Thinking quick, I used my webs again. Not to get him stuck, but to blind him. It worked! I could get close enough to bash the hairy troll with my guitar and defeated him! With the troll out of the way, I went back to free the rich mummy and led him back to the king pig. Ah, Reginald, so good to see you. Thank you for your assistance, spider peasant. You may leave my mighty presence now. <laughs> so much for grateful. From day 44 to day 49, I finally made my way back to base to deliver the redstone blocks that Spider Queen needed. This is perfect, exactly what I needed. Sozo, you make the rockin' world go round. It was no problem, Spider Queen. Can't wait to see what you do with it. It was then that I took a look around the base. The whole place was in a real sorry state. I decided now that I had a moment to spare, I'd dedicate some time to cleaning up and improving the base with some defensive upgrades. I built a sturdy perimeter wall to stop any intruders from getting in. By the time I was done, Spider Queen had something to show me. Ta-da! Open your eyes, look up to the sky, and see! Wow, that's really something, Spider Queen! Thanks, Zozo. It's not quite done, but it'll rock you when it's finished. From day 50 to day 53, I awoke to the sound of a struggle. Spider Queen was in trouble! Zozo, help! Help me! I want to break free! I've got to break free! I rushed into action, but as soon as I stepped out of my room, I was greeted by a gang of bubble monsters! Rise and shine, Ice Spider-Man! I didn't order room service, guys! It's on the house, no charge! Speaking of, boys, charge! Outside, Piglas had arrived, and she was sending in hordes of her bubble minions to attack! I hadn't even had breakfast yet, and now I have to fend off monsters with all of my might! Good thing I got in my eight hours last night! We got that spotty you're looking for, boss! You idiots! That's the musician! I wanted the little brat in blue pajamas! Not Luggy Mercury here! I was still battling the bubble monsters! By the time I had finally burst every last one of them, I had gained enough XP to level up! Wow, I've heard some people start their day with a workout, but this is insane! I now had 50 hearts and a new ability, Ice Blast! I was quickly becoming the coolest superhero around. There was one problem, I'd lost my musical guest in the process. From day 54 to day 57, I decided my only option was to return to the pompous King Pig and see if he knew where I could find Pigless. Huh, King Pig, Pigless. I wonder if the two of them are related. Yeah, probably just a coincidence. A short journey later, and I was back in the Twilight Valley. All I had to do was listen out for the sounds of stolen money bags. And sure enough, I found the monarch in front of his castle. Oh, you're back. Spider something, wasn't it? Did one of my servants send for you? No, I'm here to ask you some questions. And since you didn't even thank me for saving your friend, I'd say you at least owe me a little bit of your time. My time is very valuable, like all the jewels and gemstones my servants brought me from far away. But I suppose I have a few moments to spare. My friend was taken by Pigless. I need to know where she is. Pigless? Pigless? Do not speak that name! You know each other, then. She's a traitor to the crown, a deserter. She stormed out when she figured out she'd never be next in line to the throne. Gave her a real complex. She feels like she's better than everyone, but still not good enough if she can't rule. Wait, so does that make her your sister? Or no, cousin? Royalty is confusing, and it seems like a lot of fuss over nothing. Nothing? How dare you? We uphold a proud and noble tradition of theft. Uh, I mean, a tradition of tradition. So where is Pigless now? I don't keep in touch. She said some very hurtful things about me which weren't at all true. But last I heard, she resides in Red Rock Mountain, although the terrain is harsh, so you won't make it there in one piece with so little armor. From day 58 to day 62, I decided to follow up on the one useful piece of advice the King Pig had to offer and set about crafting myself some tough new armor. I scoured the area until I found a cave that led to a mine tucked away deep underground. And in the mine was plenty of what I needed, diamonds! I managed to find quite a few, but not enough to make the armor I needed. Not wanting them to go to waste, I forged them into a mighty diamond sword for stronger attacks and a matching pickaxe to make mining quicker and easier. I didn't have to wait long to test them out either. As it turned out, the mine belonged to a skeleton jackal who was none too happy about me mining his diamonds. But it didn't take more than a few swings of my shiny new blade to settle our differences. 
From day 63 to day 66, I decided, rather than rushing straight back into danger and venturing up the treacherous terrain of the Red Rock Mountain, I hiked back to base to catch up on some rest. That way, I could be ready and refreshed when I set off to save Spider Queen. But speaking of Spider Queen, when I returned to base, I was met with a saddening sight. Her statue left unfinished now that she'd been captured. I thought about completing it in her honor, but it felt too much like admitting defeat before I'd even tried to save her. So instead, I left it as it was. She could have the satisfaction of finishing her hard work once I'd gotten her back in one piece. Knowing her, she was probably looking forward to it. I settled in for the night right in Spider Queen's bedroom. That way, I feel closer to her. Watch till the end of the video to see if we manage to save her. And why not click that subscribe button down below to stay tuned for future videos. From day 67 to day 70, I made my long journey towards Red Rock Mountain, scaling the dangerous Crimson Cliff Face and being careful to watch my step. One fall and it could be all over. As I descended from the peaks, I spotted a path. I followed until I saw the looming structure that Pigless had made into her base. And the whole place was massive and absolutely crawling with her minions. While I was still scoping it out from a distance, I thought back to my mission to save the rich zombie from that hairy troll and how I hadn't been able to enter through the front, but had better luck looking for a second way in. So I tried the same tactic again, heading around, scaling massive mountains, swinging from one hilltop to the other until I made it to the side of the base. I saw my entry point, an opening in the side. I aimed carefully and shot my web shooter to make my way in. And I landed right in the middle of a group of bubble monsters. It's the spider! Get this sucker, boys! Think of a way to roll out the welcome wagon. You treat all your guests like this? I swung my diamond sword and instantly slashed the nearest two, taking care of the next with a well-timed ice blast. Another hit from my sword, and he was shattered to pieces, while the others were quickly stuck fast with my webs right where I could strike at them. From day 71 to day 74, I snuck around the inside of Red Rock Mountain Base, making sure to keep out of the path of Pigless's many minions. But there was one enemy I recognized. Halt in the name of Pigless! Oh wait, it's you, Zozo! Barry? Barry B. Benson? Black and yellow, hello! Um, how are things with you and your wife? Hard to say, hard to say. We're still going through it. We're planning to go see a concert soon. She likes jazz. That's... that's good. So you're not gonna attack me? Nah, you're good. I just need to think about some things. It wasn't hard to see that his heart really wasn't all in on working for Pigless. It's a good job. I mean, there's not a lot of coverage. No dental, stuff like that. I'm gonna go. Oh, sure. Listen, I shouldn't tell you this, but check the chest in the room up ahead. There's some handy stuff in there. I went to investigate and found myself the proud owner of a full set of diamond armor. Whoa, Barry wasn't kidding. Now I can match the speed of a spider with the protection of diamonds. From day 75 to day 78, I explored a little more and found where Pigless had left Spider Queen trapped in a big cage. She'd clearly been singing to herself to keep her spirits up, but by now she was just yelling in case any of the bubble monsters were passing by. I just got to get out of this prison cell. Someday I'm gonna be free. Oh, look, I want to break free. I've got to break free. Now, please? Easy come, easy go. Will you let me go? Now's good for you then? Z Zozo, oh, you're a sight for sore eyes. I've been so bored cooped up here. I want to get out and have fun. I want to ride my bicycle. I want to ride my bike. You have a bike? But you've got eight legs. Oh, I think it's a metaphor or something. Well, I've got just the thing to break you out. Gunpowder? Gelatine? Dynamite? With a laser beam? Close. It's a diamond sword. With a swing of the blade, I cracked open the lock and sent Spider Queen back to our base. She rushed off, and not a moment too soon, because Pigless had found me. You! First you intrude on my dimension, then you intrude on my home. I'm going to squash you at long last, puny spider! Pigless came at me, but I was able to freeze one of her feet in place, then web her hands to slow her down. I leaped close to swipe at her with my diamond sword, but just when I thought I had the upper hand, she knocked me back with a powerful hit. I decided to escape while I still could, and dashed out of the base. From day 79 to day 84, I was exhausted from the fighting, so the Spider Queen offered to give me a ride, which was really nice of her. We managed to make our way back to safety, but little did I realize that Pigless had had enough. That little wretch! How dare he try to defy my right to rule! He and the rest of this overworld will soon see that they shouldn't have messed with Pigless! With that, Pigless used a powerful potion to make herself even stronger. Now she'd be an even tougher fight when it came time for me to face off with her again. 
From day 85 to day 89, we arrived back at base, and my good friend Spider Queen, whose ride was surprisingly comfy, was super happy to be free from Pigless's cage. Pigless thought she could stop me and spit in my eye. But we did it. We are the champions, my friend. We sure are. Look, I managed to swipe this from one of the guards at Pigless's base. I thought I could use it to break free, but instead, I was just screaming, let me out. Anyway, I think you should have it. You're going to take on the world someday. Spider Queen handed me the upgrade. It was a fire aspect and sharpness too, enchantment. I immediately went to apply it to my diamond sword to deal some extra damage. Now, I had the power of ice, fire, and spiders on my side. Once I was done improving my sword, I returned to find Spider Queen putting the final finishing touches on her statue. Heyo, are you ready? Hey, are you ready for this? Are you hanging on the edge of your seat? And may I present to you my masterpiece. I call it Zohemian Rhapsody. Zohemian? Named after you, of course, Zozo. I can't keep living without, living without, living without you by my side. I like it. Makes me feel ready to take on Pigless one last time. Well, you better be careful. I saw she had a whole cabinet of potions to make her stronger. The bubble monsters steal them from King Pig's cellar and bring them back to her. Huh, maybe I can intercept them and take a potion for myself. That ought to level the playing field. And that way, you'll keep on fighting to the end. From day 90 to day 94, I headed back towards the Twilight Valley and followed a trail that the bubble monsters had left from the King Pig's palace to a small camp they had set up nearby. Just like Spider Queen had told me, they had a potion of power, but it must have been the last one left. Yep, that's the last one left. Hey boss, question. If Piglet's had us stealing all these here potions, why doesn't she give each of us one? Then we'd all be a tougher armory and she could overthrow the King Pig. Why not about that kind of talking? The potions are for Piglet's. I webbed the closest bubble monster in place, slashing the other with my newly enchanted fire aspect diamond sword. The heat popped them in an instant, and before the other two could get free, I cut them down too. I retrieved the last potion of power, but waited before I drank it. The King Pig's palace was only a short walk away, and maybe I could get one last favor from him. From day 95 to day 97, I walked right up to the King Pig's throne and showed him what I had recovered. You know what this is? Why, that's an excellent vintage. One glass is worth the yearly wages of my entire staff. You'd better put that back in the cellar with the others before I have you executed. There are no more others. Pigless had been sending her minions in to steal them from right under your nose. Pigless? Something must be done about that treasonous traitor. I'll take care of Pigless, but only if you let me keep this potion and be way nicer to your servants. In fact, stop hoarding all this fancy expensive stuff. Learn to share. Sh share? What is that? I'm not familiar with this common folk slang. You have a whole library here. Look it up in the dictionary. After a few moments of learning what sharing was, the King Pig returned. Preposterous. If I, how do I pronounce it, shared, I wouldn't have all my power and riches. But that might not be such a bad thing, if even a fraction of your wealth might improve the lives of other people. So if I, say for example, just gave you this netherite armor, then how would that improve anyone's life? Well, with that, I could take down Pigless, which is also what you want, isn't it? Yes, but confound it! What commoner wizardry is this? You've confused me. I need to go lie down. Here, this is yours, I think. With that, the King Pig handed over an entire set of netherite armor. Now I had the most powerful protection against Pigless. On day 98, I returned to my base to make the final preparations I needed to ahead of my big battle with Pigless. I had my diamond sword at the ready, enchanted with a powerful fire aspect for added flaming damage. I had my netherite armor on, ready to defend me against oncoming damage. Plus, I had my ice Spider-Man powers at the ready. I even tested out my ice blasts and cobwebs, and they were ready to go. Before leaving though, I stopped by Spider Queen's room to tell her how to get to Max's neighborhood. If I didn't make it back, she would need a safe place to live. Now there was just one question. What was going to happen next? If you think you know, then leave your answers in the comments. And while you're there, tell us what video you'd like to see next. On day 99, I made my final journey to Red Rock Mountain and stopped just outside the entrance to Pigless's base. It was quiet, too quiet. All her minions seemed to have run off in fear. If they were that scared of her new, more powerful form, then I needed to be prepared. I drank the potion of power and this upgraded me to my final form. I now had a full 100 hearts and the last of my ice Spider-Man powers were finally unlocked. I could climb walls. 
Ready for anything, I headed inside to find Pigless waiting for me. She was much bigger and stronger than before and way more vicious. I was meant to rule this silver world. It's my birthright. And I won't have you meddling in my destiny any longer. Oh, I don't think so, Pigless. The battle was on. Pigless hurled a javelin at me. But thanks to my super spider agility and my outback leggings, I dodged right out of the way, then climbed up the nearby wall so I was out of her reach. From my vantage point, I fired ice blasts and cobwebs at her, trying to slow her down. Get down from there. She threw another javelin, and I went to get out of the way, but I timed it wrong and fell. I quickly picked myself up and got back into the fight. It was the toughest of battles, but Pigless seemed to be overexerting herself. I managed to keep dodging away, climbing the walls, and using my webs to slow her down, until finally I landed an ice blast. This, this is too cold. Don't worry, my sword has a fire aspect enchantment. It should help churn up the heat. With a mighty strike, I had done it. Pigless was defeated at last. On day 100, instead of returning to my base, I returned victorious to Max's neighborhood, where I was immediately greeted by Spider Queen, as well as Max and his friends. Another one bites the dust. Great work, Zozo. I knew you were gonna be a big man someday. Well, I couldn't have done it without you, Spider Queen. Oh, you're too kind. You're the champion here, Zozo. Spider Queen really livened the place up with her music. But we're glad to see you made it back in one piece. Me too. And everyone should click the link in the description to check out the adventure we went on together. Then, much to my surprise, the King Pig also showed up. Zozo, my boy, you didn't tell me that sharing also came with this delightful feeling. I don't really know what it's called, but seeing the smiles on my servants' faces gave me one of those, uh, what, what, what are they called? Emotions? You mean you feel happy? That's the ticket, and I've been reading up too. Did you know that all the traditions of the pig had monarchy are centuries old? It seems so silly to still be upholding them. So what did you do? Oh, I gave my palace and all my riches to my servants. Except they aren't my servants anymore. Just people. And so am I. Look at me. One of the people. Now, who is your charming eight-legged friend here? Well, you might be a former king pig, but she's Spider Queen. And we will, we will rock you. On day one, I spawned in as Lava Spider-Man in the middle of the Black Forest. Whoa, Lava Spider-Man, what a combination. What will they think of next? But I didn't get to enjoy being the world's hottest web spinner for long because suddenly some Endermen were emerging out of the woods around me. Uh oh, I think I'm gonna leave you guys to it. I turned and ran off as fast as I could until I couldn't see the Endermen anymore. They blended in well with the dark trees of the Black Forest. I'm only a baby Lava Spider-Man with 10 hearts and no weapons. I can't take on a whole gang of Endermen like this. But I hadn't accounted for one thing. Endermen can teleport. One of them popped up right in front of me, stopping me in my tracks. Why are you running from us, little one? Do you have something to hide? What? No, I don't have anything to hide. I was just running because you guys were scary. No offense. Sorry, kid, but I don't buy that. You're gonna need to come with us. Our master is gonna wanna speak to you. I thought about running again, or trying to fight, but then I turned and saw that even more of the Endermen had appeared behind me. There was no way I could get out. On day two, one of the Endermen took me to some kind of strange fort deep in the Black Forest. I had no idea who these Endermen worked for or what they planned to do with me. If you just play ball with us, kid, then no harm will come to you. There are just a few things we need to figure out. Somehow, I didn't believe him. He threw me into some kind of prison cell with tall walls and no ceiling, just staring off into the sky. That's when I noticed a back door. Don't bother trying to open that. I turned and saw a cartographer standing in the corner, watching me. I've tried. It can only be opened from the other side. I've been here for a week, so I think we're gonna be here in the long run. So they got you too, huh? I'm Zozo. They captured me outside. What are you in for? They captured me while mapping out the area. I'm a cartographer. That means I make maps. But they accused me of working for some suspicious person and locked me up. Believe me, I've tried every way to escape. It's impossible. Hmm. Or maybe not. 
Going on a hunt, I walked over to one of the walls and started to climb up it, like a spider. This must have been one of my awesome lava Spider-Man powers. Look at me go. I climbed all the way up the wall and hopped up onto the other side. Then I opened the door from the other side, freeing the cartographer. That was amazing, Zozo. You're like a superhero. Oh, geez, that's nice of you to say. But we should probably get out of here before those weird Endermen come back and try to capture us again. Good idea. We'll split up, and I hope to see you again someday, Zozo. Likewise. Stay safe out there. So I ran off, trying to make my way out of this sinister black forest. On day three, I escaped the black forest and reached the Badlands, which was as scorching hot and unforgiving as the name suggests. Wow, thank goodness I'm a lava Spider-Man, or I'd be roasting right now. But it wasn't just the heat that was a problem, it was hunger. You can't just run away from a bunch of sinister, mysterious Endermen without working up an appetite. And there aren't that many trees around here either, so I guess apples are out of the question too. But I wasn't out of luck just yet. I managed to find some delicious, healthy carrots nearby and pick them up for a quick snack. I may be a Spider-Man, but I'll take some nice carrots over flies any day. After eating the carrots and filling up my hunger bar, I continued exploring the Badlands until I ran into something spectacular. A huge, tough diamond golem. Hey there, little dude. Pick your jaw up off the floor. You may be looking at the ultimate blinged out golem, but don't worry, I'm actually very approachable. Sorry, I, I don't mean to stare, it's just, wow, you're so shiny. Oh yeah, you better believe it. You know what they say, diamonds are forever, and so am I, no matter what these goofy, unshiny Endermen say. Wait, the Endermen are after you too? I literally just escaped from those guys. Is that so, little bro? And I think we have a lot to say to each other. Follow me, my pad isn't far from here. I'd made another friend. I eagerly followed the diamond golem through the Badlands, excited for whatever would come next. From day four to day five, I continued with the diamond golem over to his pad. It was the coolest base I'd ever seen. The exact kind of thing you'd expect from a blinged out super golem. Wow, this place is amazing, diamond golem. I'm so impressed. Please, kid, call me Dino. And your name? I'm Zozo, Zozo the Lava Spider-Man. That's a mouthful, little Zozo, but I can dig it. What you're lacking in riz, you can make up for in guts. I like that. Let me guess, people have called you a superhero? Wow, that was a good guess. I have a talent for reading people. You just look like a hero, man. There are some dangerous people out there. Not every golem is as nice and cool as me. I need your help to take care of the people out there giving me a bad name. Can you dig it? You think you're tough enough? I can dig it, and I definitely think I'm tough enough. I'll help you defeat all the bad guys. Right on, little Zozo. First, though, you can't hang out here. You're harsh in my vibe. Take these tools and go build your own place. Get it? Yes, sir. Dino the Diamond Golem gave me a stone sword and a stone pickaxe, and I left to make a base of my own. That's how I ended up in the Amaranth Fields. Yeah, this is a much nicer climate. I immediately started cutting down trees and mining stone until I had enough material to start building a base. It wasn't anywhere near as cool as Dino's base, but if I worked hard, maybe someday it would be. But the physical exercise was worth it anyway, because I suddenly leveled up, getting bigger, stronger, suddenly having 20 hearts, and gaining a new power, Web Blast. Oh yeah, now I'm like a real Spider-Man. And that new power couldn't have come at a better time. One of the same Endermen from earlier teleported in front of me. You, I've been searching for you all day since you escaped our base. I knew you were trouble. Oh, you have no idea. Unlike them, I wasn't taking prisoners. I fired web blast after web blast until the Enderman was no more. When I level up enough, I'm gonna be every bit as strong as Dino the Diamond Golem. From day six to day eight, I continued working on my base, making it a little bigger by adding a new building. And once I'd done that, I could start making it look as cool as Dino's base. During my lunch break, I saw a familiar figure walking through the Amaranth Fields. It was the cartographer who'd been in the prison with me. Of course, I immediately ran over to have a chat with my old cellmate. Hey, buddy, how's the free life treating you? Hi, Zozo. I wish I could say it was shaking out well, but it's honestly been pretty tough. Oh no, why? My boss, an iron golem, was meant to give me instructions on what maps to make next. But when I got to his house, it was destroyed and he was gone. It feels like something suspicious has happened. Maybe someone is going after golems. 
That's worrying. Take care of yourself out there, cartographer. I'm gonna go tell Dino the Diamond Golem. If someone is going after golems, he needs to know. And being true to my word, I immediately left to go visit Dino and warn him about the potential threat. Hmm, wish I could say I was surprised, but it ain't easy being a golem. Here's the thing though, us golems are tough. We're not easy to take out. If someone is going after golems, there's a good chance they're a vengeful golem themselves. Do we have any leads on who it can be? I've heard rumors of an obsidian golem operating in the North Badlands. Go look into that and report back to me. Of course, Dino. I'll get on it. And so I left in search of the obsidian golem, who was potentially behind the golem disappearances. From day 9 to day 10, I traveled north, braving the harsh conditions of the Badlands, knowing how important my mission was. But why would the obsidian golem go after his own kind like that? It doesn't make sense. As a budding superhero, I know that nobody commits a crime without having some kind of motive. But while I was mulling over the mystery I'd been sent to solve, the obsidian golem got the jump on me, literally jumping out right in front of me. Uh -huh. I knew someone was following me. You think because I'm a golem, I'm dumb? Big mistake, bucko. And unless you have a good explanation, it'll be your last. Look, I'm sorry that I was looking for you, but it was for a good cause. I'm hunting the person who's making golems disappear. Huh, like I'd buy that. I think either you're the culprit or you're working for him. And I'm not taking any chances on my life here. Let's go, creep. There was no more reasoning with him after that. The obsidian golem attacked me full force, and there was nothing I could do to talk him down. I just fought back as best as I could until he was finally defeated. But in the process, I was almost completely destroyed. Wow, Dino wasn't kidding about golems being powerful. Luckily for me, a friendly Mungus happened to be passing by. He walked over to me, seeming concerned. You okay there, son? You're not looking so hot, aside from the lava, of course. Yeah, I just got beaten up by a huge, powerful obsidian golem, so you're right, I'm not doing too well. Lucky for you, I've got a spare health potion. Here, take it. You look like you need it more than me. He gave me a health potion, which I quickly drank, delighted to have my health restored. You're a lifesaver, literally. Say, do you have any idea what kind of golem might be able to destroy other golems? I'm hunting a dangerous criminal. A golem that destroys golems, huh? That's a tall order. They'd need to be an extremely tough golem to do that, not to mention incredibly crafty. An obsidian golem is probably too low level to pull off that kind of evil scheme. An extremely tough golem, interesting. This will give me something to look into. From day 11 to day 12, I returned to Dino the Diamond Golem's awesome pad with less than awesome news. I met Among Us out in the Badlands, Dino, and he seemed to think that the Obsidian Golem didn't have anything to do with all the disappearances. It'd need to be a much stronger golem than him. Huh, who you gonna trust when it comes to golems, little man? Some random Among Us or me, an actual golem? Believe me, nobody knows this situation better than Dino. Uh, that makes sense, I guess. What do you think I should do now then? There's a sandstone golem in the Amaranth Fields. I've got a good reason to believe he's involved in all this. You don't need to investigate him, just take him out. Understood? Understood. I'm sorry for ever doubting you, Dino. Yeah, man, you better be. Now knowing how tough golems were, I knew that I needed better weapons to take them on. That's when I found a mining cave and searched deep inside until I found some iron ore. This is exactly what I need. I mined the iron ore and set to building a furnace in that deep, dark cave. I then used the furnace to smelt the iron ore into iron ingots, which I then turned into an awesome iron sword and an iron pickaxe. Now I've really got an edge. I left the cave only to find an angry grizzly bear outside waiting for me. So this is your cave, huh? When the bear tried to attack me, I unleashed some web blast and then defeated it with my iron sword. First a grizzly bear, next a grizzly golem. From day 13 to day 15, I traveled across the amaranth fields in the glistening nightlight, searching for the sandstone golem so I could carry out my mission. I finally spotted the golem, standing at a campfire and warming himself. It was strange. He didn't look aggressive at all, but I trusted Dino. I carefully approached, my sword drawn, preparing to fire a web blast at him and then charge in for an attack. But before I could, he turned and saw me standing there. Hey there, friend. 
You look a little chilly for a lava Spider-Man. Want to come and warm yourself by my fire? Are... are you sure? Of course. There's room enough for everyone around here. I approached carefully and stood next to the sandstone golem, even though Dino had told me not to. We talked for a while, shared some jokes, and strangely, he seemed like a nice guy. I just couldn't believe he'd been behind all the golem disappearances. Something was up. Something fishy. I left the sandstone golem safely by his campfire and went back to talk to Dino. I'm gonna get to the bottom of this. From day 16 to day 19, I went straight back to Dino's pad to confront him about all the strange things I'd been noticing lately. He wasn't pleased. What? Why didn't you take out the sandstone golem? Why? Don't you trust me? It's not that I don't trust you, it's just everything you've said to me, it doesn't quite add up. Here's what doesn't add up, kid. You and me, if you don't trust me, as in you don't follow every single one of my orders to the letter without question, I can't work with you. Get out of here and never come back. I'll solve the golem disappearances myself. With that, I left Dino's pad, knowing I'd probably never see him again. I returned to my base, only to see, to my surprise, that the cartographer was waiting for me there again. Oh, hey, cartographer, what's up? No time for small talk. I've discovered something important, the one behind the golem disappearances. It's a diamond golem. What? It makes total sense. That's one of the toughest kinds of golems out there. Only he would be strong enough to easily take out other golems. Oh, oh no. Dino was behind it all, all along. He used me. I need to warn Sandstone. I ran back to the Sandstone Golems camp in the Amaranth Fields, but it was already too late. Sandstone was gone, and only Dino remained. You're too late, Zozo, my man. I just finished up what you should have done. Sandstone's finished. You, you monster, you used me. You've been betraying and destroying your own kind, but why? Simple, a diamond golem is pretty special, but you know what's even more special? Being the only golem, and I like the sound of that. So you're just destroying all the other golems to satisfy your own ego? Yeah, pretty much. Why, you gonna stop me? I'm absolutely gonna stop you. I'm Zozo, the Lava Spider-Man. I'm this world's superhero, and your evil selfish plan ends here. But it didn't end there, because Dino the Diamond Golem ran up to me and knocked me out cold with a single punch. From day 20 to day 22, I came to at the campsite. Dino wasn't there anymore, but the camp wasn't empty. A TNT Golem was standing right above me. Oh no, you don't work for Dino, do you? Goodness no, I'm Splodo, the TNT Golem. I was here to warn my friend Sandstone about the evil plans of Dino the Diamond Golem, but it seems I was too late. I'm so sorry I couldn't save your friend, Splodo. I should have seen Dino for what he was earlier, but I was so blinded by how cool he seemed. I let him boss me around, but never again. We'll work together to take him down. Splodo returned to my base with me, and I built a new house for him to sleep in while we worked on our shared plan to take down Dino before he could destroy all the golems. I believe in you, Zozo. Together, we're gonna bring this evildoer down. Yeah, we'll be superheroes together. From day 23 to day 26, I traveled back to the Black Forest. It sure feels different being back here after learning so much. I was a lava spider boy back then. Now, I'm a lava spider man. Help! I need somebody! Help! Not just anybody! I need a hero! Hey, that's me! Wait, I know that voice! I followed the sound of the voice and saw the cartographer being attacked by a guster! Get away from him! I fired a web blast at the guster, destroying it! Thank you, that was a pretty close one. I'm glad you showed up. Me too, I want to make up for letting Dino trick me, and that means I need to help as many good guys as I can. Being a superhero isn't just about beating the villain, it's about helping the people who need it. From day 27 to day 31, I continued exploring the Black Forest. As I did, I spotted a herd of sheep that looked really lost. Turned out, I was right. They had lost their old home and were trying to find a new, safe place to stay. So I escorted them back to my base. I guess you guys will need a place to stay. No point in inviting you over and then making you just stand around. That would be rude. So I built a pen for the sheep. It wasn't anything fancy, but they seemed pretty happy with it. After I was done building that, I decided to check in on the rest of the base. While I was gone, Splodo the TNT Golem added a chest area and made paths while I was building. Awesome, so much extra storage. Just what every superhero needs. Meanwhile, Dino the Diamond Golem was at his base in the Badlands, and he was up to no good. If I'm gonna get rid of all the rest of the golems, I'll need some extra muscle. That's where you come in. Think you're up to the task? 
Bada bing, bada boom. I'm gonna go ahead and guess that means yes, boss. From day 32 to day 35, I hatched a new plan. I need to go back and talk to those Endermen and explain what I know. I think we're actually all on the same side. I just hope they'll listen to me. I traveled back to their base in the Black Forest, where I spotted one of the Endermen standing out front. Hi there, funny story, I was wrong about some stuff. You, bold move coming here, little lava Spider-Man. You're in big trouble. Wait, we don't have to fight. We're on the same side, I promise. Do you think I'm a fool? Why would I believe you? You can take me to your boss. I'll come willingly this time. I just want to talk to him. Interesting. Very well. He took me to an evoker. Hello, my name is Zozo. I, I know who you are. You're an acquaintance of Dino the Diamond Golem, yes? I was, but I was wrong. He tricked me. I'm so sorry. I want to help. I can tell that you have a good and honest heart. The heart of a hero. Very well, young Zozo. There is very little we know for certain at this point, but we do know that the golem disappearances plaguing this land can all be traced back to Dino. I will provide you with more information when I have it, as long as you promise to do the same. It's a deal. From day 36 to day 39, I traveled back to my base. Those guys were actually pretty nice. I can't believe I was so scared of them before, but now we can work together. But if I'm going to be much help, I'll need some better equipment. To the mines! I headed down into the cave and started mining. I found some iron ore, which I smelted into iron ingots. I used it to craft a set of iron armor. I returned to my base shortly after, only to find a toolsmith waiting for me. Excuse me, are you Zozo? Sure am. I brought you something. He handed me a diamond. Oh, wow, thank you. What did I do to deserve this? I just thought maybe you could use it. Also, I need your help. Come with me. We have a friend in common who needs to speak with you. From day 40 to day 43, I followed the toolsmith and was surprised to see the evoker. Hey again, what's going on? I just saw you. Indeed, but I have received some new information that I needed to deliver in person as soon as possible. You see, Dino is... But before he could finish what he was saying, a pillager showed up! Bada bing bada boom! You dead meat, Zozo! Uh-oh, that's me he's talking about! He was way bigger and stronger than me! I'm not sure if I can defeat this guy! Both myself and the evoker ran off in separate directions and met up later, coincidentally. Go, Zozo! Run! I will do my best to handle him. I will meet you in a safe place when the coast is clear. You got it! I ran out of there as fast as I could! From day 44 to day 49, I made it back to my base without the pillager following me. I just hope the evoker got out of there okay. I certainly did, young Zozo. The evoker emerged, somehow completely unharmed. You're here! You're alive! Oh, I'm so glad! I was scared the pillager would hurt you! He certainly gave it his best try, but I managed to elude him. I didn't get this far by being an easy target, you know. I may not be much of a fighter, but I know how to survive. Me too, so far at least. I've learned of something that I believe will help you with your continued survival, and with our shared goal of stopping Dino from continuing to wreak havoc. Ah, oh, sweet, tell me about it. There is a special weapon, a destroyer, capable of breaking apart diamonds with very little effort. I imagine it would give you the edge you need against Dino when you finally confront him. Sounds perfect, where is it? That's the trouble, its location is a secret. I have heard that there may be useful information in the Badlands, however, I suggest you travel there and see what you can turn up. I'll head there now. From day 50 to day 53, I traveled to the Badlands in search of information on the Destroyer. They call this place the Badlands for a reason. It's terrible. I hope I find something quickly and don't have to stay here for too long. Thankfully, my wish came true. I spotted a book on the ground, and when I picked it up, I noticed the title, The Destroyer and You. Wow, this is super convenient. Okay, it says that the Destroyer is a special weapon, one that's hundreds of years old. It was created to overthrow a corrupt diamond golem who tried to become the king of the land. Hey, that's kind of like what Dino's doing, I think. But where is it? When I flipped to the end of the book, the last page was missing. Oh no, I bet that was the part of the book with the destroyer's location. Guess I'll have to come up with another plan. Back to the spider base. From day 54 to day 57, I was on my way back to my base when the pillager jumped into view, blocking my path. Hey, I'm walking here. Well, hey, I'm blocking here. 
You thought you got away, huh? Well, tough toenails, kid. No one gets away from Petey the Pillager. If you won't let me pass, I guess we'll just have to fight about it. Give it a shot, Pipsqueak. I attacked the Pillager, but he didn't even budge. Uh-oh, he's still way too strong. I need to get out of here before this gets serious. I fled the scene and got out of there as fast as I could. Meanwhile, at Dino's hideout, he was feeling triumphant. Another one bites the dust. Soon, I'll be the only golem around. No one's gonna be as special as me. All these other golems better watch their backs. From day 58 to day 62, I ran back to my base. When I got there, I saw that my friends there had built an additional storage room for us to keep weapons in. Hey, with all this space, I should make some new weapons to keep in here. To the mines! I headed down into the cave to see what I could find. Turns out, luck was on my side because what I found was some diamonds. I've heard of fighting fire with fire. Maybe I should try fighting diamonds with more diamonds. I gathered the diamonds and used them to craft a diamond sword, a diamond pickaxe, and a diamond chestplate. From day 63 to day 66, Splodo came to speak with me. Zozo, I was able to find out the location of that destroyer you're looking for. Apparently, it's in the Brimstone Caverns. Quick, come with me, I'll show you. I followed Splodo to the Brimstone Caverns. Phew, it smells like rotten eggs in here. Yep, that's all the Brimstone. Anyway, here's the place. Uh-oh, looks like we can't get in. I think we need some kind of key. Oh no, I'm sorry, Zozo. I'll help you look for a key. We'll get in there. Thanks, Splodo. You're the bomb. Get it? Yeah, I get it. From day 67 to day 70, Splodo and I walked back to my base. When I got there, the evoker was waiting for me. Hey, maybe I should go ahead and build you a guest room. No thank you, Zozo. This is not a social call, I'm afraid. I'm here to ask you for your help. A magma golem is tearing apart the Amaranth fields, and I fear that he will burn them all down in a fit of rage. Please, help me reason with him before his fiery temper destroys everything. I'll do my best. I looked around, following the smell of burning grass, and sure enough, I spotted a magma golem stomping around. He looked really angry. Hey, I can see you're upset about something, but you don't have to do this. Please stop before someone gets hurt. You! I know you! You're working with him! That awful diamond golem who killed Sandstone! I have nothing to say to you. With my mouth, at least. We can talk with my fists. Your fists can talk? Oh, no, you mean you're gonna fight me. Wait! He wouldn't listen! He attacked me, and I had to fight back! My diamond chestplate protected me from taking too much damage, and I managed to knock him back long enough to talk again. I don't work with Dino anymore. I realized what kind of guy he really was. Now I'm trying to stop him from hurting any more golems. I swear. You're not just lying to save your skin? No. From a lava guy to a magma guy, I promise I'm telling the truth. Then I've got an idea. Let's you and me work together and show that diamond studded jerk he's not as special as he thinks he is. From day 71 to day 74, I showed the magma golem back to my base. He told me that he had lost his home while trying to run from Dino, and he didn't have anywhere else to go. Luckily, we had plenty of room. You can stay here for as long as you want. It'll be fun. But I couldn't stick around for the housewarming. The pillager turned up, ready to cause some trouble. Still gonna be fun when I crash your party, little man. Oh no, the pillager. That's right. Hey, nice place you got here. Would be a shame if something happened to it. With that, he started attacking my base and smashing it up. I drew my diamond sword and attacked the villager, but he was still stronger than me. Nice try, Pipsqueak, but no dice. I'm gonna take something of yours to teach you a lesson. Before I could stop him, he ran away. Zozo, help! That was Splodo's voice. I ran in to help, but the pillager and Splodo were already gone. I couldn't stop him from taking Splodo. What kind of hero am I? I couldn't take it anymore, and I went to my room to lie down. A little while later, the magma golem came to my room. Zozo, I built some additional defenses while you were resting. We have a new perimeter wall around the base to protect against any future invaders. Thank you, that makes me feel a little bit better. Now I just need to find a way to get Splodo back. Meanwhile, in the Badlands. Now that the pillager has taken that TNT golem that I couldn't get to before, I'm one step closer. That loser Zozo is never gonna beat me. From day 75 to day 78, I was busy trying to come up with a plan to rescue Splodo. I'm not ready to fight the pillager yet. I'm going to need something to give me an edge. A new weapon or another ability, something. And as if on cue, the evoker appeared. 
Zozo, I heard what happened to your explosive little friend. I believe this may help you. The pillager is vulnerable to explosive attacks and has very sensitive eyes. Its flashy ammunition should both damage and distract him. He handed me a firework crossbow. Oh, this is awesome. Do you know where I can find the pillager? I know many things, Zozo. And yes, that is one of them. He lives just outside of Dino's lair in the Badlands. Thank you. I took my new crossbow and set off to find the pillager and get my friend back. From day 79 to day 84, I traveled to the Badlands. It didn't take long for me to spot the pillager lurking around outside of Dino's base. Give me back my friend. Nah, I don't feel like it. Maybe this will change your mind. I fired my firework crossbow and it actually managed to hit. Hey, maybe I can actually do this. And so the battle with the pillager began. I felt much more confident with my new weapon, but he was still much stronger than me. Ready to give up? No, this is merely a tactical retreat. I ran away until I found a big rock to hide behind, where I met, against all odds, Splodo the TNT Golem. Zozo, I escaped, and on my way out, I managed to grab this. Quick, eat it. He tossed me a golden apple. I ate it in one big bite, and I felt myself growing stronger. My heart increased to 60, and I gained a jump boost. I grew, too. That golden apple gave me the strength I needed to finally defeat the pillager. I ran back, fighting the pillager one-on-one, -on -one until nothing was left. Dino's strongest henchman had been defeated, and Splodo came over to celebrate with me. I did it! Thank you, Splodo. You're a real hero. So are you. Come on, let's go home. From day 85 to day 89, Splodo and I returned to the base. Guess what? Chicken butt? No, that's... <laughs> Really funny though, I grabbed something that the pillager dropped when you beat him. It's a magic key. I think it's the key to the brimstone caverns. You can finally go and get the destroyer. That's amazing, you've helped so much. Thank you, Splodo. You can thank me by getting rid of Dino once and for all. With the magic key in hand, I traveled back to the brimstone caverns. I held my breath as I unlocked the door and entered the caverns. There, I saw it, the destroyer. Yes, finally. I started walking toward it, but a wither skeleton jumped in the way. Oh, no you don't. It attacked me, but I fought back. It took a little while, but I managed to defeat it. A destroyer, yes. I've got to get this back to my base. From day 90 to day 94, I left the brimstone caverns, ready to head back to my base. But as I exited the caverns, Dino the diamond golem appeared in behind me. Hey, Zozo, how's it going? What? Aren't you here to attack me? Nah, why would I do that? We used to work together pretty well, you and me. What do you say we team up again? Give it another shot. Are you kidding? You lied to me. You kidnapped my friend. You're trying to hurt tons of people. Why would I ever work with you? Because when I'm the big boss around here, you're going to want to be on my good side. I don't think you have a good side. With great power comes a lot of responsibility, and you've misused it at every turn. Thanks, but no thanks. Fine, have it your way. Before I could stop him, he pushed me into a deep hole and snatched the destroyer out of my hands. He left me there and took the weapon with him. From day 95 to day 97, I used my new climbing skills to escape Dino's trap. But by the time I got out, he was long gone and so was the destroyer. I need some advice. I should go visit the evoker and see what he thinks I should do. I traveled to the black forest to see if the evoker had any tips for me. But when I got there, the place was in chaos. The evoker was there, but he was badly injured. Oh no, what happened? Dino came through on a rampage. He must have learned that I told you about the destroyer. I don't have much time, little lava Spider-Man. Listen close. You must get the destroyer back. It holds a great power, and it will give you the strength you need to defeat him. The weapon itself is not what matters, but the strength within you that it will bring to the surface. The power is within you. And just like that, he was gone. Thank you for everything. I promise to get revenge on Dino for everything he's done. On day 98, I returned to my base to get some rest and come up with the next phase of my plan. But when I got there, it was a mess. The perimeter wall was destroyed and I couldn't see my friends anywhere. Oh no, Dino must have done this. He did. Splodo, you're okay. I am. I managed to hide from him. Everyone else ran away. 
I don't blame them. It was scary. But don't get discouraged, Zozo. We're going to be superheroes together, remember? I'm not so sure, Splodo. He's so much more powerful than us. How can we ever hope to beat him? Listen, I know it seems hopeless, but we have to try. I'm still here. It's not over yet. He came after our base. Now we need to take the fight to him. On day 99, I traveled to the Badlands to confront the baddest guy in those lands once and for all. I don't know if I'll make it through this, but I know I have to try. Splodo was right. I can't lose hope now. When I got there, he was waiting for me. Hey, Zozo. Welcome to my humble abode. Ready to lose another fight? Nope. I attacked him, but he hit hard. I took a lot of damage, but I got an idea. I got my firework crossbow and fired a shot. It surprised Dino, and he jumped back. When he did, he dropped the destroyer. Now's my chance. I grabbed the destroyer and took off in the opposite direction of Dino's base. Yeah, you better run. I'll be back. I took the destroyer back to my base and remembered what the evoker said. The power is in me. I just have to find it. I used the destroyer, and as I did, I had a vision of every fight I'd had so far, every friend I'd made along the way. I felt so much stronger. When the vision ended, I saw that my base was magically repaired, as if Dino had never destroyed it. That's it. I'm ready. On day 100, I returned to Dino the Diamond Golem's base for the final showdown. This time, I had the destroyer, and more importantly, the heart of a hero. My heart, I mean. You're too late, Zozo. Pretty soon there won't be any golems left. You think you're special? You're not special. I'm the only one who's special. That's not true. You think you're better than everyone else, and that's why you'll never really win. I used the destroyer to attack, and for the first time, I did some real damage to Dino. Hey, what's the big idea? Justice, that's what. It was a tough fight. Dino was the strongest opponent I had ever faced, but I knew I could beat him. And after a hard battle, I finally did. I can't wait to go home and tell Splodo. We did it, we beat the bad guy. We're real superheroes after all. On day one, I spawned in as Spidey from Spidey and his amazing friends. I was surrounded by friendly spiders who were bigger than me. Wow, I'm really small. I must be a baby version of Spidey. Wow. But where are my friends? None of the spiders got a chance to tell me because the green goblin jumped out from behind a bush. There you are. Thought you could hide from me with all these spiders. Well, you were wrong, Spidey. Tag, you're it. <laughs> he threw a pumpkin bomb and I jumped out of the way just in time. But the other spiders were caught in the explosion. Oh, no. I was the only one who made it out okay. You're rotten, Green Goblin, rotten to the core. What are you doing here? You're asking the wrong questions, Spidey. You're asking why I'm here, but you should be asking, why isn't Spin here? Right, Spin, Miles Morales, my friend. Why isn't he here? What did you do with him? That's for me to know and you to find out. If you want to get him back, y'all need to come and find me and beat me in a fight. If you can't find my hideout in 100 days, I'll make sure you never see your little buddy again. He threw another pumpkin bomb and disappeared, leaving me alone with my thoughts. Oh no, that evil villain kidnapped Spin, and I only have 100 days to get him back. If I'm going to fight the Green Goblin and win, I need to get a whole lot stronger first. On day two, I decided to get out of the plains and into a new location. With all of the spiders gone, I was completely on my own. And there's nothing for me to climb or swing from out here. I need some tall buildings or some trees. So I headed into the forest. I already had 10 hearts. I sure hope I don't run into any trouble out here. I must have jinxed myself because a group of gremlins came out from behind a bunch of trees and started closing in around me. Uh -oh. Hey, why are you bothering me? I didn't do anything to you. Yeah, they didn't have to. We're here on orders from the Green Goblin. He wanted us to deliver something to you in person. A beatdown. Uh-oh, I'm not strong enough to take on all of these enemies at once. Let's get them, boys. The gremlins were getting closer, and I couldn't see anywhere to run. Was this it? Was I already going to lose on my second day? Hey, pick on someone your own size. I looked towards the voice, and I saw a rabbit skiing towards the gremlins. He skied right into them, breaking through the circle, and I was able to run away before they could get to me. When I finally stopped running, I noticed the rabbit was right behind me. Thanks for the help. No problem. I can't stand bullies. My name is Harry. Hi, Harry. I'm Spidey, but you can call me Zozo. 
On day three, Harry the skiing rabbit took me back to his home with him in the underground rabbit burrow. It was really nice of him, especially since I didn't have a base of my own yet. Now I have a safe place to rest for a little while where the green goblin wouldn't bother me. Thanks, Harry. This is so nice. No problem, Zozo. Hey, there's someone I want you to meet. He knows a lot about the green goblin, and I think he can help you out. He took me to the burrow of a Giza rabbit. Hello. I understand you're going up against the green goblin. A nasty fellow. Don't I know it. Well, forgive me for saying so, but you won't get far like that. You need some tools, some weapons, and you need to get a whole lot stronger. I know, but where should I start? The forest to the north has lots of wood. Go gather some so you can start making tools. You'll need to be well equipped with the strongest tools you can find, as well as an open heart and an adventurous spirit. It takes a hero to defeat a villain. And if you really try, you can become the hero that takes down the Green Goblin once and for all. That sounded like a whole lot of work, but as I thought about all the spiders the Green Goblin hurt and thought about Spin being held prisoner somewhere, I knew it was worth it. I guess I'd better get right to it then. First things first, I need to go gather that wood. You'd better go with him, Harry. We all need a friend in tough times, and Zozo has quite the journey ahead of him. Okay, let's go, Zozo. On days four and five, Harry and I went out into the northern forest to start gathering wood. There was no time to waste, so I started punching as many trees as I could. After I gathered enough wood, I built a crafting bench and crafted a set of wooden tools. Hooray, now I can start gathering stone. Yes. You're doing awesome so far. Thanks, but I think this is the easy part. It'll only get harder from here. I'll be here to help every step of the way. Every hero needs a sidekick, right? That's true, but enough talking for now. I've got to get enough stone to upgrade my tools. I got to work, and once I had enough stone, I upgraded all of my tools from wooden ones to stone ones. Ready to help me build a base? We need a secret hideout if I'm going to be a real superhero. Yeah! We started building the base and made sure to add a room for me and another room for Harry so we both had somewhere to sleep. While we were building, a tarantula hawk flew up and started attacking me. What's the big idea? I couldn't let it get me, not when I was finally making progress. And I definitely wouldn't let it hurt Harry. The fight wasn't easy, but I won. And afterward, I felt myself getting stronger. Hey, I gained a heart. You're one step closer to being a superhero. Yeah! On days six through eight, I explored more of the forest. I wanted to see what other resources I could use to build my base, or if there was any useful item someone might have dropped. As I was getting ready to pick some apples from a tree, I heard someone yelling. Help! Somebody, help! Sounds like someone needs a hero. I ran toward the sound of the voice, and I saw a raccoon being attacked by a pack of wolves. Don't worry, I'll help you. I'm your friendly neighborhood Zozo. As soon as the wolves saw me coming, they left the raccoon alone and ran at me. They snapped their jaws, trying to bite me and scratch me with their claws. And I dodged their attacks, and I hit them back with my stone sword. Ha, you're no match for me. I'm getting pretty good at this fighting to defend the innocent thing. After a while, I tired them out, and the wolves ran off and left me and the raccoon alone. Thank you so much. You saved my life. No problem. I'm Zozo. My name is May. I'm sorry to bother you, but you're such a strong fighter. Would you help me with something else? Helping is what I do. I'm so glad. And please, come with me to the swamp. There's a nasty bad guy there I need help with. Lead the way. On days 9 and 10, May led me to the swamp to help deal with her problem. So, what's the deal with this swamp? I was staying here when this big, mean ogre came in and started stomping around and telling me to get out. He broke my house apart and told me that this was his swamp now and I needed to get out. But all of my things are still here and I don't want to just abandon them. Oh jeez, that does sound like a lot of trouble. I'll do whatever I can to help. Thank you so much. I'm so glad I found you. What are you doing in my swamp? The ogre jumped out, roaring and running right at us. He was much bigger than me, but I couldn't back down. I drew my sword and got ready to fight him. This isn't your swamp. You can't just kick people out. I can do whatever I want. I'm the biggest, baddest ogre in the swamp, which means it all belongs to me. You can't take things from people just because you're bigger and stronger. Who's gonna stop me? 
Me! I ran at him with my sword, but he grabbed me and lifted me into the air. Then he threw me. I landed hard and got the wind knocked out of me. Uh-oh, he might be too strong. He was getting ready to grab me again, and I swiped at him with my sword. He knocked the sword out of my hand, and it went flying. I had to run and grab it, and I knew if I tried to fight this ogre right now, I would lose. Let's get out of here, May. We'll go back to my base, and when I'm strong enough, I'll come back. I promise. Okay, thank you for trying. I didn't want to run away, but I can't save the day if I let myself get beaten by an ogre. So even though it wasn't fun to leave the fight, it was better that May and I were safe. On days 11 and 12, I brought May back to my base. I built her a room of her own with a chest and a crafting bench. Thank you so much, both of you. Of course, stay as long as you like. We're happy to have you. I was meaning to ask, do you know anything about the Green Goblin? That monster? I sure do. He kidnapped a friend of mine, and I'm trying to learn more about him. I'm pretty sure he lives underground somewhere. I don't know exactly where, but I've heard a lot of rumors about his underground cave hideout. If you can find out where he is, and you're strong enough to fight him, you might be able to use the element of surprise to help you defeat him. Underground, huh? That's really helpful. Thank you, May. Of course. The Green Goblin is terrible, and I'd be happy to see someone finally take him down. After I talked with May, I decided to add some food sources to my base. I know, I think I saw some chickens in the woods. Yes. So I built a fence to contain the chickens, then I went out looking for them. There you are. Come with me, chickens. I'll show you your new home. I herded the chickens back to the base and got them all set up in the fenced area. Then I cut down some grass and planted some weed at the base. Now we'll have plenty of food, and I learned more about the Green Goblin. What a successful day. On days 13 to 15, I decided to find some ways to get stronger, so I turned to Harry for advice. I think the best way to get stronger is to get some more experience. Explore new areas, go on some quests, fight more enemies. You can't learn if you don't put yourself out there, and upgrading your tools probably won't hurt either. That's a great idea, thank you. If I was going to upgrade my tools, I needed to get mining. I mined some coal and some iron too. I raced back to my base to make a furnace, then I smelted the iron and used it to craft all iron tools. Great, now time to explore. Where can I go? I should go somewhere really different from anywhere I've been so far. I know, I'll go to the ice spikes. So I gathered all of my new tools and headed off to the ice spikes. Brr, it's getting cold. I'm not used to this weather. Maybe I should have brought some more supplies with me. Maybe you should have, but you didn't because you're weak and you'll never beat the green goblin. Who said that? I looked up and saw a green golem standing on top of a tall ice spike. I did. The boss sent me to check on your progress, and he's gonna laugh so hard when he hears about all this. But first, I think I'll teach you a lesson about trying to be a hero when you're really just a zero. Then he jumped down from the ice spike and landed right in front of me. But I was ready for him, and I had my brand new iron sword ready to go. Not so fast. He ran at me, and I swung my sword. He tried to hit me, but I dodged and attacked again. It was a pretty tough fight, but I managed to win in the end. After I defeated him, I noticed he dropped something. Cool, an explosive bottle. I can use this to fight the Green Goblin. Yes. I was so excited to show my friends what I found that I ran all the way back to my base. Harry was waiting for me. You should build an armory to keep your weapons. Great idea. So I built an armory, and after I did, I felt myself getting stronger. Whoa, I gained two hearts. On days 16 to 19, I decided to follow Harry's advice and keep exploring to get more experience. Maybe I'll find something else that will help me beat the Green Goblin or make a new friend. As I was looking around, I found an abandoned house. Anyone here? No one answered, so I let myself inside to have a look around. It was totally empty, except for a chest. I opened the chest and found an old book. I guess I'll read it. Superheroes should always take the time to read every now and again. As I read the book, I couldn't believe what I was seeing. Whoa, so the Green Goblin is really Norman Osborn, the scientist. That's why he's so good at making those pumpkin bombs. I can't believe it. 
but it's in a book, so it must be true. Maybe this information will help me later. I grabbed the book to take with me and left the house to head back to my base. As I did, I saw the gremlins from before. Not you guys again. You better believe it, Spidey. The gremlins rushed at me and I fought them off with my sword. When they realized they were outmatched, they started to run away. This ain't the last you'll see of us. Whoa, the green goblin. Tell your boss I'm getting stronger every day and I'm coming to get my friend. I couldn't believe it. I beat the gremlins on my own this time. Wow. I was really starting to feel like a superhero who could defeat the villain and save the day. I wasn't quite ready yet, but I had already come so far. On days 20 to 22, I looked for some more bad guys to fight in the forest around my base. I wanted to get stronger and keep my friends safe at the same time. A mutant spider pig attacked May while she was looking for food, and I rushed in to save the day. Get away from her! I swung my sword and defeated the mutant spider pig easily. I was so much stronger than I was on my first day. I think I'm finally ready to take on the ogre and get your stuff back. Are you sure? He's so scary. I am. I just need to make some armor first. I gathered some more iron and crafted myself some shiny new iron armor. With this on, he won't be able to hurt me. I made my journey back to the swamp where the mean old ogre was waiting for me. Back for more, are ya? I'll be happy to beat you again if you didn't learn your lesson the first time. He grabbed me just like he did before, but when he threw me, my armor protected me from getting hurt. Nice try, but I'm ready for you this time. He was so surprised that he didn't have time to dodge my attack. I got him with my sword, then I hit him again. This time, he was the one who got knocked over. Oh, fine, thank what you came for. Just leave before the Green Goblin finds out you're here. He's scared of how strong you're getting, and he's not afraid to cheat and have someone else take you out before you find his hideout. Whoa, so he's actually getting nervous. Don't get too confident. You're still nowhere near tough enough to beat him. Just go. So I grabbed a chest full of May's things, and I headed back to my base. On days 23 to 26, I returned to my base and went to find May. Here you go, I got this back for you. Oh, thank you so much. It has everything I own inside. I was so scared that I lost it all after that ogre destroyed my house. Can I stay here for a little while though, before I find a new place to live? Stay as long as you like. Have you ever thought about building a guard tower to keep the base safe in case the green goblin sends any goons this way? That's a great idea. I got to work building a guard tower, and when I was finished, I felt much safer. But I needed some ranged weapons to go with the guard tower, so I gathered flint, feathers, and string, and crafted a bow and arrows. Then May came over to talk to me, and she was holding something. I found this in my chest of items, and I wanted to give it to you. My way of saying thanks for all of your help. What is it? A newspaper. It's enchanted. I think it might be useful for you. Whoa, thank you so much. With my enchanted newspaper, my new guard tower, and my bow and arrow, I was feeling more prepared than ever. On days 27 to 31, I decided to get back to exploring and looking for new ways to get stronger. I hiked out to the Badlands to see what I could find. While I was exploring, I saw some tarantulas stuck in a hole. I'll get you guys out of there, just hold on. I helped them all climb out, and then I sent them back to my base so they would have a safe place to stay for a while. Spiders have to stick together. After I helped the tarantulas, I looked around the Badlands some more. There weren't any enemies to fight, but there was a lot of terracotta. This looks cool. I'll gather some for my base. I got as much terracotta as I could take with me and went back to my base to decorate with it. I worked hard on creating a beautiful terracotta floor in my room. And when it was finished, I kicked back and ate a snack, but I couldn't rest for very long. Zozo, I need your help. I sprung into action. What's wrong? There's trouble in the rabbit burrow. We have to go help them. Let's go. On days 32 to 35, Harry and I went back to the underground rabbit burrow to check things out and help save the rabbits there. When we got there, we saw a bunch of the Green Goblin's gremlins attacking and throwing pumpkin bombs. They were destroying everything. Not so fast. Don't worry, rabbits. Your friendly neighborhood Spidey Zozo is here to help. What are you gonna do about it? I drew my sword. Remember this? They looked pretty nervous, and I started slashing left and right, taking down as many gremlins as I could. I thought I'd beaten all of them, but there was one more hiding behind a nearby wall. Before I could get to him, he pulled out another pumpkin bomb and threw it right at the geezer rabbit who helped me before. No! 
But it was too late. The gremlin blew him up. You'll pay for this. I took down the last gremlin, fast, but I didn't feel any better. I was so upset about the Giza rabbit. It's not your fault. It's the green goblin. He did this. You're right, Harry. And we're going to make sure he never hurts anyone else again. On days 36 to 39, I decided to head to the beach and see if I could find anything useful there. I needed all the strength and weapons I could get if I was going to beat the Green Goblin before he could strike again. Are there any heroes out here? Please, I need help. A hero? That's me. Who said that? I can help. Me. I looked over and I saw a walrus sitting on the sand. What's wrong? Out there in the water is my favorite rock to sit on when I want to catch a few rays. But when I try to sit there now, there's a mean octopus who keeps attacking me and trying to pull me into the water. That's not very nice. You wait here, friend. I'll go teach that octopus some manners. Be careful. He's very smart. It's okay. I'm pretty smart, too. I swam out to the walrus's favorite rock and waited for the octopus to try and mess with me. Wow, what a nice rock. I sure hope no one tries to pull me into the water. But I did hope someone would try, and I was ready. I didn't think I could fight in the water while trying to swim at the same time, so I would have to be able to fight from a distance. Good thing I crafted a ranged weapon. I grabbed my bow and arrow and waited. Sure enough, that pesky octopus showed up and tried to grab me. Before he could, I fired my arrow at him. A direct hit! He tried to grab me again, so I fired a few more arrows for good measure until I was sure I had won. Then I swam back to the shore to give the walrus the good news. Thank you so much. Are you the hero that's trying to take on the green goblin? I sure am. Well, here's some advice. I heard he's strong, but not very fast. That's why he throws those pumpkin bombs. If you can avoid his bombs, it'll be easier to get him. Thanks so much. I'll remember that. On days 40 to 43, I returned home to my base. It was looking a little bit dull, so I decided to spruce up the place with some torches for extra light and to keep any zombies away. As I was finishing up, Harry came to see me. Say, this looks great. Thanks. Do you think we could make room for some more guests to stay here? I met some squirrels in the woods who said the green goblin blew up the tree they were living in. I thought maybe we could help them out. Sure, the more the merrier. Hey, let's build them a tree house, then they'll feel right at home. Harry and I got to work, and before long, we built a great tree house for the squirrels to live in. Then Harry went to get the squirrels and show them their new home. It felt good to help more people in need. It was a nice reminder that being a hero isn't just about beating bad guys, it's about helping those who need it. The tarantulas came to see me after I finished the treehouse, and then they told me that they heard a rumor about some baby spiders that were being held prisoner in a nearby cave. Well, I couldn't let that happen. I promised them I would go over there and rescue those baby spiders. On days 44 to 49, I traveled to the cave the tarantulas told me about to save those poor kidnapped baby spiders. When I got there, I couldn't see any baby spiders anywhere. I looked all over the place, but there weren't any spiders in that cave. Huh. That's weird. You fell for my trap, Spidey. Ha 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 ha. The green goblin jumped out from behind a rock. There aren't any baby spiders here. It was a lie. But I knew that would get you to come here. Poor little hero with no one to save. Too bad, so sad. You're scum, green goblin. Oh, you wound me. You're running out of time, Spidey. Too bad you won't be able to save your buddy Spin before I blow him up. And when I'm done, I'll go to your base in the forest and blow that up too. That's right, I know where you've been hiding. Why are you doing this? Because I can. Wish I could stay and chat, but I've got to run. I'll leave you with some company though. Oh, minion. A huge earth elemental came into the cave. Bye, Spidey. The green goblin ran away and disappeared, leaving me alone with the earth elemental. He looked pretty tough. Uh-oh. I had no choice. If I wanted to get out of there and get back to my base, I was going to have to fight him. On days 50 to 53, I did my best to fight the earth elemental. He was a lot bigger than me, but I wasn't about to back down or let myself get scared. I stared him down and got ready. The earth elemental ran at me and knocked me back into the cave wall. But luckily, I had my armor on and it didn't take too much damage. I jumped back onto my feet and ran at the earth elemental with my sword. I got a few good hits in before he knocked me back again. 
Next, I climbed up onto a rock and shot an arrow at him. It hit, and while he was recovering, I jumped back down and rushed up to deliver a finishing blow. He went down, and I was the winner! Woohoo! I did it! I really am turning into a superhero! Wait, what's this? There was a book on the ground! I picked it up and started to read. The Notes of Norman Osborn. I hate spiders so much. One day I'll find a way to get rid of every spider in the world, and then I can finally be happy once they're gone. I'm so glad I found this underground cavern to build my laboratory and basin. It's the perfect place to do my work. So the Green Goblin hates spiders. That's why he's after me and why he took spin. That's despicable. So his lair is in an underground cavern. There's a drawing of a map here showing where it is. I'm one step closer to defeating him once and for all. On days 54 to 57, I returned to the forest and started making my way back to the base. I've got to tell my friends what I've learned. But as I was walking, I heard someone crying for help. I followed the sound and there were some baby spiders in a cage. Oh no, there really are some baby spiders in trouble. Hold on, little guys, I'll save you. I ran to let them out of the cage, but I couldn't find a key. Then a phantom swooped down on me. I was ready though, and I slashed at it with my sword until it went down. I saw that the phantom dropped the key, and also a blast protection enchantment. Awesome, this'll help keep me safe from the pumpkin bombs. I took the key and let the baby spiders out of the cage. Be free. Then I went back to my base to let the tarantulas know that I managed to help out the baby spiders. Then I told them all about what I found out about the green goblin and his lair. I showed them the map and they recognized where the caverns were. They promised to help me find the caverns when I was ready to finally have my showdown against the villain. On days 58 to 62, I decided to plant some more crops so that we could have more food at the base. I went into the forest and gathered melons, then planted a bunch of melon seeds next to my wheat. Next, I decided it was finally time to upgrade my gear again. I went back down into the mine where I found my iron and started looking for some diamonds. It took a while and a lot of hard work, but finally I found some. Sweet, time to craft some diamond gear. I was able to use the new materials to craft a diamond sword. After that was done, I expanded the base and added some more rooms, including a bedroom for Spin. After all, he's gonna need somewhere to stay when I finally rescue him. On day 63 to 66, the squirrels came up to talk to me. They told me that I might be able to find some useful materials at the stone shores. So naturally, I decided to head out there and see what I could find. When I arrived there, I couldn't see much of anything that would help me beat the Green Goblin. I was starting to feel discouraged. Then, I saw a stone monster coming toward me. Oh no, I guess I have to fight this guy now. But to my surprise, he didn't want to fight. He just wanted my help getting rid of a mean mutant creeper that took over the cove and killed his uncle, Ben. I'm so sorry that happened. Of course I'll help. I asked him to show me where he last saw the mutant creeper and he pointed me in the right direction. A hero's work is never done. I guess with great power comes great responsibility, but I'm ready for it anyway. On day 67 to 70, I traveled to the part of the cove that the mutant creeper had taken over. I could get more fighting experience and help someone at the same time. Just another day of being a superhero. Come on out, you mean mutant creeper. I'm here to dispense some justice. As soon as it heard me, the mutant creeper came out of hiding and rushed at me to attack. It came at me and started hitting me, but I countered with my sword and my armor protected me from the damage. I knew I had to defeat it before it had a chance to charge up or explode. So I had to work fast, faster than I ever had before in a fight. It was hard, but I managed to take down the mutant creeper before it could blow up. Whew, that was a close one. Then I went back to the stone monster. That mutant creeper won't be bothering you ever again. All in a day's work for an up and coming superhero. On day 71 to 74, I traveled to the desert to gather some sandstone. As I was walking, I noticed an unusual rock formation. It spelled out, if you're enjoying this adventure, find more Zozo videos by searching for Zio, Zio. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Wow, nature really is amazing. Now back to what I was doing. Having a nice little desert stroll, eh, Spidey? The green goblin suddenly appeared. I wasn't expecting to fight you so soon, but I guess there's no time like the present. Watching you lose will be a gift. 
I drew my sword and got ready to fight. The green goblin tossed a pumpkin bomb at me, and I had to dodge, but I got caught in the blast. Ouch! I lost a few hearts. I hate to admit it, but I'm still not strong enough. I need to get out of here. So that I would live to fight another day, I ran away as fast as I could before he could attack again. That was a close one! On day 75 to 78, I ran back to my base with some of the stone I managed to gather before the green goblin attacked me. I built a stone wall around the whole base. Awesome, this is looking great! At least something good came out of my trip to the desert. When I finished building the wall, Harry the rabbit came up to me. Zozo, I found something, and I wanted to give it to you as a present. Thanks for everything you've done for me. You're a great friend and a real hero. Here you go, it's a cobweb. Whoa, thanks. I took the cobweb and it reminded me of my spidey strength and everything I had accomplished so far. I felt myself growing bigger and I gained three more hearts. On day 79 to 84, I decided to try out my new strength and bigger size by fighting some bad guys. If I wanted to push myself, a good way to do that would be to fight in the cold. So I went out to the snowy tundra to look for some mobs I could fight to keep everyone a little bit safer. I didn't have to look for very long before I found some gremlins bullying a snowy goat. Hey, stop that! Who's gonna stop us? Me! Oh yeah, we're so scared! They didn't know how much stronger I was, so they weren't ready for how much better I was at fighting. It didn't take long before I beat them. I asked the snowy goat if he wanted to come back to my base and stay there for a while. No thanks, I'm good. Could you walk me home though? It's just near here. Sure. So I walked with the snowy goat until he reached his house. You seem like a nice kid. Here, take this. Maybe it'll be of some use to you. Then he gave me a vine lasso. This is great, thanks. Now I can attack the green goblin from a distance. Saving people is its own reward, but it's also pretty nice to get a gift every now and then. On days 85 to 89, I went back to my base. When I got there, I saw there were gremlins attacking. Let's burn this place down before Spidey gets back. Too late, I'm already here. Uh-oh. The gremlins ran away, but I chased after them. Hey, I've gotten faster. Before too long, I had almost caught up to them, but I was stopped by the Ragnarok. Please help, those nasty gremlins stole my falconry hood. I need it for my favorite eagle. Don't worry, I'll get it back for you. Using my newly increased speed, I chased after the gremlins and caught up to them. Once I did, I beat them quickly and grabbed the falconry hood to take back to the Ragnarok. Here you go. Thank you so much. It's what I do. On days 90 to 94, I followed the gremlin footprints into the deep forest. This must be where they were hiding out before they attacked my base. Oh look, it's Spidey. Come to lose another fight. There was a gremlin chef waiting for me. Do I know you? No, oh, but you should. I'm the Green Goblin's top henchman, the guy who handles all of his biggest problems. And you're a pretty big problem, a bug that needs to be squashed. He looked pretty tough, but I wasn't about to back down from this fight. I had to prove that I could take on the Green Goblin, so I needed to beat his right-hand man first. Let's do this. On days 95 to 97, I fought as hard as I could against the gremlin chef. At first, it was not going very well. He was dodging all of my attacks, one after another. Man, this guy's tough. Might as well give up now, Spidey. You'll never beat me, and you'll never beat the Green Goblin. But I thought about Spin and everyone else who the Green Goblin was putting in danger, and I knew I couldn't give up. I grabbed the vine lasso and threw it at the gremlin chef. It caught him! I was able to get him still enough to land a hit, and then the fight started to turn around. Finally, I knocked him down for good! As I was getting ready to leave, I noticed that he dropped something on the ground. Cave centipede leggings! I decided to put them on and see what they would do. I went back to my base and realized I could now climb up walls. Wow. This is perfect! I'll be able to use this to avoid the green goblin's pumpkin bombs and be faster than him. This is just what I needed! On day 98, I was back at my base and practicing climbing walls with my new cave centipede leggings. When I stopped to take a break, Harry came up to talk to me. I just wanted to say, you've turned into an amazing hero, Zozo. I'm so glad I met you. If anyone can beat the Green Goblin, it's you. Thank you. Next, May came up to see me. She brought me some diamond armor. I spent the last few days making this for you. I hope you can use it when you take on the Green Goblin.
This is amazing! Thank you so much! Then the squirrels and the tarantulas thanked me for everything I had done for them. The tarantulas said that even though I wasn't a real spider, they considered me one of their own anyway. It really meant a lot to me. I was feeling braver and stronger than ever, with all of my friends by my side. On day 99, I asked the tarantulas to give me directions to the green goblin's underground lair. They told me where to go, and I headed out. It was now or never. As I was making my way toward the caverns, a cockroach scuttled past me. You can do it! Thanks, cockroach! I wasn't sure how she knew what I was doing, but I appreciated the encouragement anyway. Finally, I reached the green goblin's cavern lair, but the outside was crawling with green golems standing guard. Oh no, how am I gonna get inside? I'll help you! It was the walrus I saved from the octopus! I'll take care of these guys, you get inside and get to the green goblin! On day 100, it was finally time for me to face off against the biggest, baddest villain around, the Green Goblin! I was pretty scared, but I also knew how far I'd come and how many people believed in me. So you made it! Such a shame you came all this way just to die! He threw a pumpkin bomb at me, but I dodged it and climbed up a nearby wall! I learned some new tricks, Goblin! They won't be enough to beat me! We'll see about that! From my place on the wall, I shot an arrow at him. He dodged it. But I jumped down and swung at him with my sword, and it hit him. Then I ran back up the wall and got ready to attack from a distance again. I wouldn't shoot any more arrows at me if I were you. Look what I have. And he had Spin there with him, tied up. I had to get Spin out of the way so he wouldn't get hurt when I attacked the Green Goblin. I thought quickly and used my vine lasso to pull Spin toward me and out of the way just as the Green Goblin threw another pumpkin bomb. Then I remembered, I had the explosive bottle. I could beat the Green Goblin at his own game. Let's get out of here, Spin. Running away, are you? Nope, just getting far enough to do this. I threw the explosive bottle at the Green Goblin. Then I got out of there as fast as I could. Boom, the cavern exploded and I knew the Green Goblin was gone once and for all. I finally had my friend back and the land was saved. All thanks to your friendly neighborhood Zozo.